Good morning, ladies, and welcome to our Breakfast of Champions this morning. Uh, today is Thursday, the 26th. I want to say good morning to everyone this morning, all the ladies on the line and the gentlemen as well, and all those who will be joining later on, listening to the replays. I want to say good morning and welcome to our Breakfast of Champions. And um, it's hosted by Marilyn Denise Coaching Services, and we are here Monday through Friday, 6 a.m., but we open the lines at 5.30 a.m. And I advise you all just to come on in the room and be a part and get some of this good blessing in the morning, this good breakfast in the morning. Once again, um, today is Thursday, the 26th of January, 2023. And I just want to say welcome to everyone this morning. And let's go ahead and open up the room in prayer and invite God into our hearts. Even though he's already in the room, we just want to invite him in and just say thank you. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning saying thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for waking us up this morning, God. We thank you for last night's rest, Heavenly Father. We thank you for having a place to lay our heads, God. We just thank you for all you have done. We thank you, Lord, for watching over our families, Heavenly Father. We thank you, Lord, also for watching over those that are with our families, Heavenly Father, for keeping them, Heavenly Father, and comforting them, Heavenly Father. Then we pray for those right now, Heavenly Father, who are going through grief, Heavenly Father, with the loss of family, Heavenly Father. For we know that you will bring them through and you will comfort them and give them peace, God. And we just thank you, Heavenly Father, for the blessings that's going forth in advance. We thank you for this room and this space, Heavenly Father. We thank you for pouring down your blessings and shining your blessings down upon us, Heavenly Father. But no goodness of our own. But by your grace and mercy, God, we are still here and still standing and still praising you, Heavenly Father. And you said that everything that has breath, praise the Lord. And that's what we are here for this morning, to praise you, Heavenly Father, and to encourage one another and push one another on just a little bit further, God. And we thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Once again, welcome to those who might have just joined in this morning. This is the Breakfast of Champions 2023. Uh, we open the lines at 5.30 a.m. We're here Monday through Friday with Maryland, Maryland Coaching Services. And I advise you all, like I said, to come in and just be a part. Uh, you will not be uh, disappointed in any kind of way. So once again, just welcome to everyone. And then I'm, on yesterday, I'm going to do a little, some takeaways and hopefully I have something to say this morning as well. Because we did get a lot yesterday from Miss Marilyn, and well, she basically just told us to just, you know, wake up and command our day, you know, our day, and then do like a, a self check, a temperature check, is what she called it. But um, you want to make sure that you know your spirit, your soul, your body, your mind, you know, are everything doing, you know, get it all into one alignment, you know, with the spirit. Are you walking in the spirit? You know, with like the spirit, the fruit of the spirit. Are you walking in joy? Are you walking in peace? Are you walking in love? You know, um, and brotherly kindness. Are you walking in brotherly kindness? You know, we can't say that we love the Lord, we love the Lord, but then there's our brother that we see and like snaring our nose up at them. Or, you know, are they in need of something? And we, man, I can't, but we still have to walk in that love for them and with them because that's what. Christ commanded us to do, walk in love and brotherly love to love our neighbors as well. So um, she reminded us to do a temperature check every morning, not just some mornings, but every morning. And then even before we do the temperature check, just to make sure that we get in a space where we are communing with God, we are, you know, thanking him and talking to him about anything that's concerning us, you know, then um, as well, we did an exercise where she allowed us to close our eyes for 60 seconds and just, you know, just be in the moment, just be present in the moment. And I don't know about y'all, but that 60 seconds seemed like a whole 60 minutes. You know, uh, my mind went all kinds of places. I'm like, oh, no, that's not good. But 
for us to just start focusing just on one thing. We can't do five or six things at one time, even though we believe that we are super women at some times, but we're really not. And I learned that the hard way. You know, my body will tell you, my mind will tell me one thing and my body will say, no, -uh, not today, Cletus, sit it down. But, you know, so we have to realize that we're not really super women. And um, then Miss Beth, she went through a, a list of things, like I said, with the soul, you know, then you want to get your mind and make sure that your mind is in a place, you know, you're not overthinking things, over processing things and everything. And then um, <clears throat> we got to listen for pride. And sometimes we do get a little prideful, you know, and everything. So we uh, have to listen for pride a lot of times and check ourselves on that pride. And one thing that Miss Marilyn said that stood out to me was grow out of offense. Q-tip, quit taking everything personal, you know. Uh, and then it's not, we go, I'll take something personal. You know, somebody has said or something, I'll take it personal. And then I'm like, what, was it really about you? Is it really about you? And then you have to check yourself and be like, no, nah, it wasn't really about me, but it was just a, a you know, a statement. Sometimes we don't want to hear the truth or don't want that correction. You know, we always think that our way is the best way. The way that I do it is the best way. You know, it's for example, with the kids and, you know, and the cleaning. Now, the way that I do it, this is the way I want y'all to do it because this is the way that I do it. But then they have their own way of doing it. And I'm like, you, okay, I guess it'll work. But <laughs> then we're like in a little debate. But then, okay, okay y'all, you know, sometimes we have to bow down and say, you're right. And stop giving that pride, you know, go ahead and say, okay, yeah, you're right. You, you, as long as it got done, it got done. It might not have been the way that I wanted to do, get, get it done, but you did it the way that you wanted to do. You knew how to do it, and it still got done. So um, that was something that was like a slap for me, you know, with the kids as well. Just taking it stuff personal, just being prideful. You know, my way is the right way. Nobody else can do it like I can. Um, and preparedness is key. You know, if you have a big speech coming up or whatever, and you only 30 minutes away from doing a speech, and then here you are trying to cram everything into one, you know, setting or whatever. You haven't done anything. You haven't done an outline, any research, on, you know, but you're just going to get up in front of the people and just present nothing but a sentence because you just sat there and just you weren't prepared. You weren't prepared. You procrastinated, you know, and now here you are in front of people giving this speech, but it's just one sentence. That's not good. You know, always be prepared. You now, whether even if it's not even your turn, still be prepared, be ready. Don't, anyone else have any takeaways or anything they would like to say this morning? No? Uh, no good one? morning, it's Kathy. Good morning, Miss Kathy. Good morning. Um, I'm, I'm with you about um, the pride and the grandkids or the kids. You know, once you tell them to do something and they want to do it on their own or they want to do it when they get ready to do it, you know. And um, uh, Miss Marilyn spoke to my heart on yesterday. That was really good. Um, you know, I had to kind of figure that out. Well, I'm still figuring it out and try not to take it personal. And, um, you know, some things you... You, you tell them to do something or you figure they should be uh, in a certain, um, not in a certain area, but sh like she said, you know, they should know to do something at a certain time mm -hmm. or something like that, you know, in their age. And then I, I, I get mad at my granddaughter because, you know, I, I tell her, I say, you should know to do that. Well, she might not know to do that. You know, mm -hmm. I'm still teaching her or still, you know, we're teaching each other. So I'm trying not to take it personal when she has an attitude of something I'm trying to teach her or tell her or something like that, you know, because she still is a teenager, but, you know, it's like, I want to rush her into knowing it. You got to know it. You got to know it. You got to know it right now, you know, but life will teach her, you know, if I don't get to teach her, life will teach her. And God is going to uh, watch over her. Um, 
another thing too, I had a session with Miss Marilyn one time and I was talking about my granddaughter and and my daughter. You know, she told me everybody is under the grace and each one of us have our own servant of grace with God. And um mm-hmm. I think about that often. You know, he's covered me when I was growing up and my mama was praying for me and I was covered under a certain type of grace. And now I have to just cover them and they are covered under a certain type of grace. You know, he's not going to, you know, the word says he's not going to put on you more than you can bear, but Mm -hmm. he does, you know, have things to um, teach us lessons, you know, so I'm still in that trust factor with God. I'm still going through that trust thing. So um, that pride thing and that, um, you know, don't let it set up in your heart and don't grow in offense. You know, I think those two to me go hand in hand because sometimes you take offense and then you, you know, you get prideful or whatever. But um, another thing that stuck out to me is learn your place, you know, with people, Mm -hmm. with, you know, just anything, you know, really, you know, don't overstep your boundaries. You know, it's just like when someone come to you and, you know, they just need you to listen. They don't need you. They don't need your opinion about it. Or they, you know, just want you to hear what they got to say to get it off of their chest. Just know your place, you know, so that kind of, you know, stuck out to me also to know my place when somebody's talking, just listen and don't have to, um, have a reaction all the time, you know, just know my place. So that's kind of some of the things that stuck out to me. And I'm actually, I'm going to go back and listen to that because that was really good yesterday. It kind of threw me off guard, but it was good. It was really good yesterday. So I'm going to go back and listen to it. And I'm going to give me a sticky mm-hmm. note or a, what you call these little mm-hmm. index cards and write that Q-tip on my mirror so we can all look at it. Quit taking it personal. So but thank you for letting me share. <laughs> you are so welcome, Miss Kathy. It's so right. Like you said, you know, with the um, the life will teach. You can teach your either life will teach you, you know, and that's so true. But then, yes, the sticky notes will help. I have them all over my mirror just as a reminder. You know, you came out of this, do, you can do it again. But then also to remind myself, you know, don't, down yourself, look at yourself as God sees you, you know, but don't just down yourself all the time. But that's good, Miss Kathy. And it was good yesterday. Then um, Harlan came back and gave us an example of, you know, what his communion with God is like, what him talking to God is like. And that was just um, good as well. And I see Miss Marilyn has her hand up. Is that Miss? I was trying to get there. Uh, if, someone okay. could, if someone could help me out and send Sheena the new link, I was trying to get it over to her. She's over on the other line. Um, I was just thinking, Nene, you know, even though, you know, a lot of times when, you know, um, you know, we as leaders are uh, whoever's facilitating or whatever, we're sharing, you know, God is talking to us also at the same time. And uh, one of the things that I often uh, would remember uh, with the Q-tip is that uh, I would have to, uh, you know, watch my stress level a lot of times. Um, I remember uh, probably had been about maybe seven or eight years ago. um, Yeah, I was building some programs and putting some programs together. And for the first time I found myself um, um, uh, having shingles for the first time. And a lot of it was coming from, you know, stress. I learned that it comes from stress and, you know, all of that. So at that particular time, I started paying attention to a lot of things that was going on around me because I did. I noticed the shingles the first day that it showed up, you know, because it was just it's just a feeling that you get on your body that is just very abnormal. I also started paying attention to other things that was going on with me. And when it comes down to taking things personal, um, like like, say, for instance, if you um, in, in some seasons when I am um, uh, overworked or just, you know, been focusing on one area for a long time, it could be anything. It could be, could be um, the children going through something. It could be finances. It could be uh, something on the job. It could be a project or whatever. And my mind 
has been so overwhelmed in that place that I forget to remember uh, that you may not be focusing properly on other things or you may not be responding properly to other things. And anything that came in that um, uh, took me out of that place uh, that I was trying to stay in, it came in as a, as a distraction. And I would get uh, sometimes um, agitated with it. A little thing like a text. A text could come in. And because I was already focused on one thing, I call myself trying to be in the moment to read the text, but sometimes I read the text wrong. And offense would come in quickly because I hadn't read the text properly. And it's just something inside that said, slow down, go back and read. Because I try to do that every day. I try to go back over things that I may have missed or whatever. And I'll go back and I'll read it. And I said, that's not even what they say yet. So what I'm saying is we have to be mindful that when you're in stressful uh, situations or you're in, um, uh, un, you know, there are they're, they're new things that you're going through, your mind is trying to process what it is that you're trying to give it. And sometimes you can take it into a place of uh, overload and you won't, you, won't, you won't read things properly. You won't see things properly. So we get offended with our bosses. Uh, they didn't recognize you today. Uh, we get offended with somebody, something someone said. They were talking about me. Uh, we get offended with what our, one of our kids. Kids didn't call me today. I saw them post some on Facebook, but they didn't call me today. Okay. Uh, someone, you know, it, it, it's, very, it's very easy for us to get so attracted to what we're going through, attached to what we're going through, and we're not in the moment of what's going on. So, and I'm saying that to say, sometimes you have to uh, shut down files in your mind. I talked about that a lot last year. Sometimes we got too many files open in our mind and we can't always process the here and now what's going on. So one of the things that that I try to do, I try to stop and think, okay, Marilyn, where did you get offended with something? Where did your emotion go off track? And then from there, I want you to stop and think about what's really bothering you. What's really bothering you? You know, it's a great indicator. The spirit is trying to work with us. Something is really bothering you. You got really offended by a little thing like that. Somebody didn't show up to your birthday party. Was it somebody or was it an individual? Okay. Uh, no, somebody, did, they didn't respond back to you. Was it that nobody responded back or were you waiting on particular people to respond back? What is the real issue? So even today, ladies, uh, the Q-tip, I mean, literally get it on a sticky note and get it before you. And check yourself throughout the day because the spirit is really trying to help us to understand something's going on. You're on overload somewhere. Could be that you just ate too much today. You know, it could be that uh, you need to have a conversation with someone. You know, it could be anything. So all of that to say, if we will continue to walk in the spirit, give things a chance. The Bible says you won't fulfill the lust of your flesh. We get offended with our relationships. You know, maybe we saw somebody else doing something and our spouse or our mate didn't do that for us. That may not have been your timing. It's just like what Kathy just said a few minutes ago. You know, that's, that's not your grace point. That's not what your assignment is. So every morning it would do us well to be in the space where you are, be in the present moment where you are. Lord, what did that message really mean? Not what the message meant that they sent just yet, but what did that mean that I got offended by that? And if I can get the offense out of it, it what the Bible said, oh, oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, victory, where is your grave? If there's no storm in here, there's no storm out there. So let's pay attention to the storms that may be going on inside of us so that we'll stop having storms on the outside also. That's all I was wanting to say. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for that, Miss Merlin. That was good. That was awesome. 
And I, like they're saying, ain't no storm in here, ain't no storm out there. No, it was real good. Uh, anyone else have anything they would like to share before our speakers come on? Okay. I haven't had a chance to check the chat box. Okay, well, this morning we'll have, uh, we're having Miss Nancy come this morning to speak with us. Um, for you all that have been in the room, that we've had Miss Nancy speak a couple of times, and every time she speaks, she gives a powerful, you know, uh, speak, not speak, but she teaches us powerfully, <clears throat> excuse me, and Every time she opens her mouth or her mic, she just speaks with so much power and authority. And even when she speaks, she's also giving us, you know, just a little side show of her um, sense of humor. You know, in life, you have to have some kind of sense of humor because if you take everything serious that comes your way, man, you really can't. Because if you don't, if you do, then you'll find yourself, you know, like Miss Marilyn just said, just in a place just of taking stuff personal and overthinking and everything. But you have to have some kind of sense of humor to get through life because life happens and it throws us all kind of curves and everything. But the way that we look at it and handle it is totally different. And I want to thank Miss Nancy for coming on uh, every week and just about <clears throat> every day she open up and give us something as well. So I um, am now going to turn it over to Miss Nancy if she is ready. <laughs> Give me just two seconds, just two seconds real quick. Just two, okay. Yes, ma'am. You know okay. what? I'm just going to do it from, you know, old school always works. Give me a second. I'll just do it this way. Okay. I'm ready. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I hope you all are having a blessed morning on this morning. I mean, today is a great day already. You just got to go out here and get you some, okay? I'm a little delayed on getting mine this morning, absolutely, but I'm here for it, sis. I'm here for it. <laughs> um, this morning, I'm going to actually go inside of a storytelling mode. I have uh, three stories, but I think um, the Holy Spirit is probably going to only allow me to share one. So uh, let's see here. The one I want to talk about the most this morning is my son. I know I talk a lot about my daughter, my youngest, which is Adeline. Um, and I talk about her in reference because a lot of times just because we're um, legally adults, it doesn't mean that we're spiritually adults, if that makes sense to anybody. Okay, so Adeline is seven years old. And so I was on the phone with a friend of mine one day and she was struggling with something. And I said, well... I just gave her a seven-year-old version and she said, well, sis, give me that seven-year-old version because I don't really think I'm as old as I am spiritually. And so that's why I share more with Adeline than I do anyone else. But I want to talk about our sons. I noticed in the group, a lot of Dad, women- Can you shut my door? We're, we talk about um, our relationships. We talk about men. We talk about different things like that. But I want to share something with you guys that just said in my spirit, my son is actually behaviorally He's probably the best kid I have in real life. He's probably um, the best kid I have. His name is Gabriel. Um, he knows that he is an angel in his mind, and he does usually act like an angel. But sometimes my son acts like um, an angel that works for, you know, the opposite team. So I have been preaching is what I call it to my kids. They'll say, well, mommy doesn't talk to us. Mommy gives us lectures because they do go on sometimes. So uh, I've been preaching to my sons for at least, I know, two to three weeks. I've been preaching, you know, son, you know, you got to do this, you got to do this, you know, be careful, slow down, take your time, think before you do anything, because I tell my son that he's, he's a man in the future, okay? Um, he's not a man right now, but he will be one in the future. And so what I'm going to share with you guys is how we have to prepare ourselves for the season that we're going to be in for our future selves as opposed to living in that cell and hoping that when we get there, that we'll be prepared. Because that's not how life really works, guys, okay? Um, give an example that before you get a job, either they train you or you go to college, but there's a season of training, a season of you getting ready. 
And so that is what I share with my son is that son, you cannot turn 18 years old and all of a sudden everything about a grown up is just going to download at one time. You got to start practicing. You got to use what you have right now in the season that you're in right now to prepare you for the future you, you know, because the future you is it's coming. You know, as long as you live, it's coming. The future you is going to be there. But are you going to be ready to receive what the future has for you? And um, so my son, I tell him lots of things. Like for one, I tell him, son, do not sit down until the woman of the house sits down. Okay. Until the woman of the house sits down, don't you get nowhere and sit down. My son, he's 12 years old. He loves to play video games. And I tell my son, anything that's not pouring into you as much as you pour into it, that may not be something you should be giving a lot of your time to. Um, I'm preparing my son to be one of the most revolutionary men of his time. And I'm doing this by sharing with him things that, from my experience, um, as a woman, what we look out for, as a woman who is an employer, what we look out for, um, just preparing him for those seasons because I don't want to send my son out here to date anyone's daughter with his brokenness, okay? Some of you ladies may be able to relate, but there are a lot of men out here that are broken, just as broken as women, but we never talk about that. We never sit on that. As women, we sit in our season of, it's my fault. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. It's not always us, okay? But I'm going to show you how as women, it is us a lot of times. Um, a lot of parents and a lot of parents I know, they're raising their kids in single parent households. That's okay. Because we have to understand that God has given us everything that we need. Meaning if he gives us a son with no father, we still got everything that we need, y'all. And in this season, y'all, we even have YouTube. God has given us the spirit of YouTube, y'all. So even if you don't know how to work on a car, you can YouTube how to change a tire. You can YouTube how to put on a door handle. So I'm not saying that he does not need a man to be physically in his life, but until it's temporarily there, um, mommy got him. I let him know that mommy got him, you know? And I'm going to teach you everything that I got to get you where you need. And a lot of times it's not really a gender-based thing that children need, um, that I'm learning as parenting. I have two daughters and one son. It's a personal need. And it's a personal need, like I spoke on yesterday, of accountability and responsibility. A lot of our young men are not being taught accountability and responsibility from home. I'm going to go back to mommy because usually it's mama and daddy that's raising son. Mama and daddy, and I'm going to be honest with you, as a mother, I have not held my son as accountable as I should have for many years. And something hit me last year and said, man, you cannot coddle this little boy. You cannot be gentle with this boy. Uh, you're going to have to give him what the world is going to give him. And my son is, uh, I don't know what we are. We, sometimes we're African-American, sometimes we're Black. But my son got the 1%. So whatever we are is what my son is in any season. And I let him know that, son, in the future, you're going to be a man and the world is going to be hard on you because of the 1% type of man that you are. So I cannot be nice to you 24, seven, seven days a week, because when he walks out of my, outside of my door, my son, um, he, he used to be very cute. He's still a cute kid. Don't get me wrong. He's a very attractive kid, but um, cuteness runs out even for women. And we have to understand that as mothers, cuteness runs out for our sons and especially our black sons. They become a threat. They become intimidating. Um, they become someone who becomes a target. And so we have to prepare them. So my girls, I'm, I, I never sleep on giving it to my girls. For one, my girls always give it back to me. But for two, I'm a woman. And so I understand that I have to give it to them the way the world's going to give it to them too. The world is going to give our kids some nasty things. The world is going to give our kids some tones, some languages that we're like, oh my God. But if you prepare them for that before they walk out your house, it's not going to be like, a, oh, my God, you know, type situation. So with my son, I prepare him in areas because, look, I don't want nobody broken son. So why am I going to produce a broken son? I tell my son now, baby, I'm saving my criminal record um, just in case you do something to your wife. And sis calls me, mommy not packing no bags. I'm getting on a plane. Um, I'm just going to pack my ID because I'm going to need to prove that I am who I say I am when the police come because I'm going to shut him down. Moms, we have to begin to shut our sons down. And we wonder a lot of times why we receive the type of men that we do. Look at the type of men, especially if you're a mother of a son. Look at how you're raising your son. I want you to really, truly look at how you're raising your son. And if you have sons and daughters, you don't have to tell it to me. You don't have to tell it to nobody in this room. 
but I want you to compare and contrast how you raise your son as opposed to how you raise your daughter. A lot of us have raised our sons and we treat them with this utmost respect. And I'm not saying let's cut the respect, you know, because I tell my daughters, don't talk to my son like that. He got enough opposition on the outside of his house. I want you to speak to him and you speak with him with love, but you speak to him and you speak with authority. You speak with him with being assertive, not aggressive. Don't be aggressive with my son because I don't want nobody to be aggressive to my son because I don't want no, I don't want my son to be aggressive to nobody's daughter. You know, and I tell him, I say, son, you're going to be a leader in some capacity, whether that's in your job, whether that's in your church, whether that's in your home with your own set of disciples. And so I put a lot of pressure back on him because as a woman, there's a lot of pressure put on me. And I'm tired of the season where women, where we have to be both men and women. I'm trying to create a generation of men that he knows that I'm a man and what that really truly looks like and what a woman really truly needs as opposed to she's, oh, I'm just going to provide. That's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to work and pay bills. I tell my son, son, you live in a house with your mother. What did I do for a living? He said, work. I said, so let me explain something to you. In real life, a real true story, your wife's job, if she has to help you pay those bills, her job is just as important, if not more important than yours, because she's helping you to do your job that God assigned you to do, which is to provide. And I need him to understand that. Don't come tell the woman to come cook, clean, wash clothes. When her has to help you pay bills, son, don't act like you can't do it too, son, because you're going to need to pull your weight too. You need to know how to take care of a child. You need to know how to take care of a household because, son, guess what? When you leave my home, unlike my daughters, you won't be leaving to marry your wife nine times out of 10. You'll be leaving to be on your own for a season. And I tell my son, I need you to be on, be on your own for a season to know how to take care of yourself before you go out there and get somebody's daughter and you don't know how to take care of yourself, and then you don't ruin her life, and then y'all turn around and have a baby, and then the whole the, the whole generation of people is messed up. I don't need that type of stress on my shoulders, y'all. I really don't. So I have to tell them, baby, we can't do that in this season. We just, we just not going to do that. If you cannot be accountable, like I tell my kids, y'all can date at 15, but I wouldn't highly recommend it because you have not healed your own childhood trauma. So now you're going to go out here and mess up somebody else's child. That's going to be a problem for your mom because when they call me, I'm going to have to go to their parents' house or whomever house, and I'm going to have to bless my son's name indeed. I'm going to have to give him a little uh, reciprocity, as I call it. That's a form of discipline, okay? Because I'm not here for it. Do not take your brokenness to somebody else. Men have baggage, too. And a lot of times we as women, we say, oh, I, don't, I have so much baggage. He do, too. He broken, too. He don't been through childhood. He is not eliminated from brokenness. So ladies, take that off your shoulders. Take that off of you. But you better put your eyes out there. You do. It's a lot of things you got to do. Especially when you have a son. You have to be cautious of how you talk to him so that he doesn't run out there and get a woman and talk crazy to him all the time. Now, don't get me wrong. I talk crazy to him with the Bible tell you spare the rush. You know me. You spoil the child. And I had to, um, the other morning, I think it was Tuesday morning. Um, I had to give son a little reciprocity on the physical aspect. So I had to pause a piece of the show because I needed to attend to my son because I asked him, I said, son, um, he has, a, I give him responsibilities. So one of them is to crank up the car because I said, son, you never want your woman. You never want your children to get into a cold car. Okay. So heat up the car. You know what I mean? I'm trying to teach him what I know from my end of how he can make life a little better for that woman so that she makes life a little better for him. She's not as tense. I mean, she get into a cold car. The first thing she's going to say when she get in that car is this end. That's what she's going to say. He can't even warm my car. But I promise you, y'all, he won't love his. They do. Because men don't take care of themselves. They, my dad always tell me, self don't take care of self. And I understand this because my dad still to this day will take care of himself and not worry about his children in real life. Like I used to tell my daddy, daddy, how? how how do you leave? How do you sleep at night? And he said, what do you mean? I said, how do you sleep? And he says, what? I said, you never called even see if I have a phone to call me. You never come by to see if I got lights to even turn on, water to drink, water to bathe in. Like, how, how do you sleep at night? I love my daddy, but I don't want to produce another generation of my daddy because a version of my daddy is what I married. I'm not producing that to nobody's daughter. That right there was just 
despicable. It was disrespectful. And I don't want my son out here ruining people's lives because I got married to a man. I was broken. He was broken. We adopted broken children. And then we became the broken family. I mean, it's just a season of brokenness, y'all. Like, uh -uh. money is not the only form of broke that you can have. And y'all need to understand that. With your sons, you need to be a little bit more assertive with them. You sometimes may have to be a little aggressive, but don't be so aggressive with your son because you don't want a woman to become aggressive with him because you have to understand that, see, women are emotional, but so are men. Men have uncontrollable emotions. That's why they are murderers. A friend of mine made a post like that, and I shared that men have uncontrollable emotions, whereas women, we can kind of channel, we can kind of turn it on and turn it back off because I do, like, I will snap, crack, and pop on my kids. And the next minute, I'm like, okay, guys, so back to what I was saying, and my daughter's like, mommy, that inner psycho in you, you need to talk to her, <laughs> like, in real life. Y'all need to have a conversation because I will literally go left on my kids and turn, and then I'll go back to where I was because as women, we'll say what we got to say and we'll move on. You know, once we get it out, we'll move on. You know, we won't sit there and dwell. And I'm talking about women. If you still dwell and baby, you are still in your childish ways. Women are not dwellers. Because grown folks, you cannot afford to dwell because you understand that God is the moving God and you need to stay moving. And when you become dwelling, that means you become uh, still, you become stuck. And a lot of times if you get stuck, you can be hanging out with the enemy in real life. You're not hanging out with God when you're stuck. God is not a God of stuck in this. I just made that word up, y'all, like my baby. Um, the school told me that she had to find 100 words and Addie Grace um, said that she got a little creative and made up a few words like her mom does sometimes. I heard that yesterday and I just died. And I said, you know, these, there's words out here that have yet to be created. She knows what it means and she's gonna share with the world what it means when it's time. I mean, she could be the next Webster. I do not knock my children for any abilities they have. I encourage them because honestly, the public school system kills our children's creativity at an early age before they graduate from high school. Our kids are down to a bare minimum as parents. We also kill our kids' creativity with that word, no. No is a dangerous word, but I can talk about that on another day. But you have to understand that with sons, I started looking like, I don't, mm -mm, if I don't want to date that kind of man, why am I going to raise that kind of man? Why am I fixing a man's plate all the time? I'm not fixing my son's plate all the time. Him is 12, okay? Jesus preached his first sermon at 12. He's overly qualified at 12 to fix his own plate. And don't get me wrong, if I'm dealing with a Grammy and we at my mother's house and uh, it's the holidays and people don't want children touching food and I feel the spirit of, let me be that type of mother today, I will fix his plate. But no, son, don't fix my plate. Why am I fixing his at 12? He know how to use a microwave, a toaster oven. He can do more. So therefore I need to give him more responsibility. Okay, we need to stop saying, because I promise you with your daughters, you thug it out with your daughters. Just be real with yourself. You thug your daughter so hard because you are a woman and you know what she needs to be a woman. But if you know what she needs to be a woman, to be a, a, a to bloom as a woman better than you did, then give it to her. Give your daughter that grace um, that you wish somebody would have gave you. I'm blessed that my mother gave me a season of grace on last year. She showed me what it looked like. So therefore now I'm able to display it for my daughters and I'm able to give it to my daughters. So I'm a little bit more kinder on my daughters in this season, but it's time for me to thug it out a little bit stronger with son. So he went outside, we had, we had a car accident on Saturday and um, we wrecked the vehicle. Son, y'all, Monday morning, I'm watching him in the house. He's playing the video game, y'all. The spirit of childhood was upon him. He got up, he got dressed, and son said, I'm going to worry about self, like his paw paw, okay? And I'm not knocking my daddy. I'm just using him as an example because I know him too personally, okay? So my son goes and cranks up the car. He has an alarm and goes up. He goes, cranks up the car, okay? So about 7, 10, 7, 12, we're walking out the door, y'all. And I said, son, I'll go get my protein shakes out the car. Y'all, I come outside, and I said, hold on, this ice, ice baby on this car that we need to get in this morning. Y'all, son don't want to crunk up the broken car, okay? He went and heated up the wrecked car, okay? 
uh, let's just say I had to wreck shop on the mic because again, I've been warning son, son, slow down, take your time. The game ain't doing nothing for you. You need to do something for yourself. And I've been trying not to spank this little boy. I, yeah, I really tried not to because he's 12. I can also talk to him. There's other forms of discipline, but I have a rule in my house. Stupid behavior gets stupid consequences. And a stupid consequence is when I have to go berserk and get out of bail and, and whoop you in real life. So I go outside, y'all, this car got ice on it. It's okay, it's in Texas. It's cold. It's 30 some degrees outside. It's got ice all over the car. I said, you know what? We're going to be late because I can't even drive this vehicle um, because there's ice. It's too dangerous. I said, son, come on in the house. I need some of this reciprocity. Um, I called my mother and I said, Ma, where's the belt? Because I don't keep up with belts. Um, I don't. And I, I bought some really nice ones. I just don't want to give my kids a little reciprocity with my, my coach one or my Gucci or my Louis belt. I just kind of think that's a season of blessedness. I'm not blessing his behind and deed on it. But see, my mom is old school. She gets belts from a multitude of places. But she'll say, man, you better not tear up my belt. And I say, yes, ma'am. So I go and I get a belt. And I and y'all, normally my son gets, excuse me, my eyes is just, my son normally gets one or two hits, you know, maybe three or four, because I've been just gentle because I know the world is going to be hard on him. I've been protecting him. Y'all, I beat that little boy from Genesis to Revelations and back. I did. Nancy, would you hold just one second? I think you are muted. I mean, you're muted. What about now? Good. You're good to go. Okay. If y'all missed it, I, I, I beat my son from Genesis to Revelations and back. That's something that my grandmother used to say. Um, yeah, I gave him what the rock had cooking. And as my mother would say, I put it down for the city, for the people, because son, we cannot continue to do this. You keep on rushing to take care of just yourself. I think this morning you went in there and laid down and did not ask the woman of the house if she needed anything done. Sir, that's a problem for me because you're going to walk into the future and your age is going to say you're a man, but you're not going to be one. I said, sir, no, sir, we're not doing this. Y'all, I, I had to put it down on him. I did. And normally my son, he was like, after three leaks, he thought the spirit of let's get up was going to be upon him. I had already warned him, y'all, because warning comes before destruction. I warned him and I said, son, do you see how I... I spanked your, your, your oldest sister. And he said, uh, yes, ma'am. It's going to be worse for you, son. It's going to be worse, okay? I said, because I'm sick and tired of the generation of men that are in my season. I darn sure don't need you to be one like that, son. And you are a black man in America. America, if they ever get their hands on you for the wrong reason, they're going to beat you and mommy's not going to be able to help you. So I'm going to have to give you something a little stronger, baby. I'm going to have to give you the strong version of Folgers not the decaf, not the original, not the light. You know what I mean? I had to give him some strong brew. Okay, y'all. So I'm spanking him, y'all. He's on the floor and he's thinking mommy's gonna stop. Mm -mm. Mommy hit herself. Now I gotta whoop you because I don't hit myself and hurt myself and I don't have a wreck. I'm gonna be extra sore. So if I'm gonna be extra sore, I'm going to do it for the home team, y'all. I got to do it for the 99 to 2000 crew. I got to bag this thing up, okay? I got to drop it like it's hot on you today. So I literally spanked son until my mother interrupted me in a phone call. She came in the spirit of savior that morning because she had a random question about something that had nothing to do about his reciprocity. So I stopped and my son decided he was going to waste more time, y'all. But he thought he was going to sit there and sit in it. No, you're not. I'm already late. We don't have time to sit. We. This is not the season of sitting. This is not the season of stagnant. No, sir. You're going to get up and you're going you're gonna to take it like a G. You're going to take it like a man because in the real world, you're going to get knocked out and you got to get back up because, you know, I tell them, you know, punch up to get beat down. You know, like I talk in songs, y'all, with my kids. I talk in a whole lot of movies and quotes and sayings, but he understood what I was saying. Get up because he has to understand as a man, you got to speak to your sons with a thought, get up, because the world is going to hit him and he's going to have to get up. So I need him to hear from his mother's son, get up, because things are going to happen, baby, but you got to keep on moving. The mission has to continue regardless of the distractions. See, and so we get in the car, y'all, and I'm going to tell you what my daughter did in just a second of how we were able to get in this car. 
So we're in the car, y'all. And I have, I live by structure. I live an ordered life because God is a God of order. I don't have time for dysfunction in real life. I plan out my schedule. My phone beeps all day long because I'm living by eight. I got to be here. 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 So son delayed me. So the older two children missed the bus. Okay. Now we got a problem because now I have to not go to one school. I got to go to this many. This many as the Addie Grace would say. I got to go to three schools on three different sides of town. Okay. We got a problem now. Okay. Because in the morning with Addie, you know, me and Addie have a thing. I get to spend time with my daughter, Adam, when I'm in town. I spend a lot of time with her. And in the mornings when I take her to school, that's our time. That's the additional one-on-one -on -one time I get my older two kids know. They can stay up late. They can do this. They can do that. They can call me because they know my number. So they can spend that time with me that she's not able to because she does not yet have those abilities, right? So I told him, I said, see, son, you taking something that not even God give us, which is time. He don't give us extra time. People say, oh, the Lord bless them with extra time. I'm sorry. I think if the Lord says it's time to come home, the spirit of death is going to take you home. I think we just be making up sometime, you know, making up stuff sometime. God knows what time you coming home. If you have a car accident and you live, we do thank God for it. We thank God for that additional. We need to be thanking God for the grace and mercy to allow you to continue your mission. He going to leave you here for as long as you're supposed to be here anyway, whether you, uh, whatever, whatever condition your body's in. So yeah, we're riding a school and the spirit of thinking hits me. Everything's a spirit. Y'all going to learn that about me. I just be making up spirit, y'all. So I'm in a spirit of thinking that you wait. This is a spirit of wasting my time. You in the season of taking. I said, look here, you robbing me. They tell you, don't be robbing God. I said, I'm God's child and you just robbed me, son. And he's looking like, I ain't steal nothing from her. Yes, you did. You stole my time with my other child. That's what you did. And see, that's a problem for me. I said, because next time you have to find your own way to school. Because this little 20 minute break is what I get with Addie. And with Addie, we sing, we praise God, we do homework. Y'all would be amazed at what me and Addie Grace can get done in a 20 to 25 minute ride to school. You know, um, she has her own playlist. Because she's in the choir, y'all. I don't know who told my baby she could sing. But sis thinks she can throw it down. And I just support her. I support her because if I can support her with the song Wipe Me Down or anything else or, you know, like a big fine woman. I got to tell y'all about the big fine woman. She's funny. Um, I can throw it down and support my baby when she want to praise God. You know what I mean? The same thing I can do for the enemy. I can darn sure do for God and I can do it a heck of a lot better in real life, y'all. So I didn't get to spend that time with Addie like I needed to. So, the, you know, the last maybe 10 minutes, I said, Addie Grace, what do you want to listen to, baby? What do you want to listen to from your track? Okay, what track you want mommy to play? And she says, oh, Mommy, God did, God did. And I said, Okay, so we played DJ Khaled. And, and she loves the part when the Wayne say, God did his thing when he made me. I mean, my baby, like, God did his thing when he made me. She'd be really into it because she know God did his thing when he made her. She is special. She is beautiful and wonderfully made. Like, she knows all of this. Addie happens to go to a Christian school, and it's the best thing that could have happened to her. So we're sitting in the car, and as me and Addie are doing our thing, I notice my son has the spirit of petty upon him, and he turns around, y'all, and he sits in his mess. And did not not warn you that we are not going to be stuck in this season of life, son. Um, we are steady moving. I looked at him, and I said, son, you focus on what was guaranteed, like satisfaction guaranteed. That woman was coming, that reciprocity. That was part of it, baby. God told me I had to do that. So I had to make it. I have to be obedient in this season. Well, I needed to whoop you. You needed to whoop it because you've been going for three or four weeks. You broke your phone. You broke the school computer. costing me money. And you ain't even got no job. You broke my mama's little water thing in the restroom, y'all. So no, sir, it's time. No, I got no, I got to whoop you. So I said, son, you're going to focus so much on what had happened because it's already happened, son. You got to focus on where can I go from here okay again god is a moving god he is not a stuck and stagnant god okay so my son's in the back seat feeling sorry for himself oh really son nobody wants that poor husband you cannot sit down and feel sorry for yourself and take care of a wife and kids no i'm not here for it i don't want that kind of man 
first I produce an account of man. So y'all, you know, I will pull up at a cemetery and give a sermon, okay? And and I will make the cemetery people probably rise like Lazarus in spirit because I go in that hard on my kids. I pulled over to the cemetery on Saturday morning and did like a 45 minute, you know, lecture sermon. And I'm pretty sure some of the people, spirits was lifted, even the dead ones, they were lifted, y'all, because it was so wonderful, okay? So he's sitting there and I say, son, you sitting here sitting in your mess instead of thinking about, okay, what did she say? What did I make that mistake? How can I fix this? How can I change this? And this is useful for anybody, son or no son. This is just, this is just some, uh, it's the internet, so this is some RNS right here. Stop focusing on what went wrong because it's already happened. We cannot change the past. Let's live in the present. And let's plan accordingly for the future, okay? The future version of yourself. And that's what I'm trying to get my son to. And I told him, I said, son, mommy got to go out of town. I said, but probably not come back home. I'm going to have to give you some reciprocity because you missed the message. You you sat in it and, and you mad about it. Boy, don't nobody care about your feelings in real life. I mean, nobody cares about women's feelings. And a lot of times, um, all they do is they want to care about your gossip. They want to know what went wrong so they can talk about it instead of be about it. I'm a mathematician in real life, y'all. I'm a problem solver. I don't have time. To, oh, Lord, they said it's 12. Now, why they say it's 12? I just don't understand why they say six times two is 12. Lord, why is six plus six 12? What? If, if, hey, look, if whoever created the numbers say that it's 12, it's 12. We're all going to know that. That's facts, not fiction, okay? Let's move on, okay? We can find many ways to come up with 12. We can say 1 plus 11 is 12. 10 plus 2 is 12. We can do 6 times 2, 2 times 6. It's a multiple ways to get 12, okay? But the answer and the fact is it's 12. The answer and the fact is, son, you're going to be a man of the future. God blesses you to live. That's, that's guaranteed. But you need to be one in here. You need to be one in here. Your age, I'm sorry, I'm like a Leonard, AJ, AJ, number the number, baby, for a lot of people. But I need my son to be a man in the future. He think he's going to waste somebody's daughter's time and have me some grandkids. I don't want no broken grandkids. I feel sorry for my mom. She got these three broken grandkids that her daughter don't want to hear and just tow up and everything. So, uh, but I'm working on y'all. They got things in the spirit of therapy. Y'all in real life, they come to therapy. Um, and then they have me a mother. I'm, I'm very therapeutic. So... He gets out of the car, he's mad at me, and I tell him, I said, son, um, I'm going to bless you with some reciprocity when I see you again. And he's like, and I said, yes, I am, because you missed the message. You're steady soaking instead of learning how you can grow. God is a God of growing. He is not a God of stuntness. It's usually pretty, you know, uh, I forget the word that I use, liquidated around God. It's usually some liquid around God. God is not a God of fame, and he is not a God of drought. He is a God of growth and prosperity. If you want to stay stuck, son, I'm sorry. I'm not here for you or Satan. Y'all can keep that energy to yourself. So he gets out the car. But let me back up to the story of how we get ready to get in the field with y'all. My oldest daughter, who I'm giving Grace, and just so happened her middle name is Grace. Her name is Olivia Grace. Um, sister is a thinker, okay? And I love the way she thinks. So this car that we need to get into was cold, okay? But my daughter knew that time is precious to mommy, time is valuable. So at the same time, we're looking at each other and I said, we need to, she says, yeah, mommy, what if we get some water? Yeah, come on, come through, y'all, come through. My daughter knows that in order to defrost the ice on the car in a rapid season, y'all, she old school, y'all, because her mommy is, let's get some water and put some water on it. My son, being a man in the future, was stuck in his consequences instead of trying to figure out a solution. My daughter, that's why I don't worry about my daughters too much on a lot of things because I've already been so hard on them and I make them know things because I'm like, baby, you can go out there and get your man and he not be a man. He could just be a man by age, but he may not be one. So baby, you got to be extra prepared, you know? And I had daughters before I became a, a boy mom, you know? So I, I kind of know girls and I'm a girl too. So that kind of helps. And so, my daughter says, let's get some uh, buckets. And so we got buckets. And here I go. I forgot, y'all. I said, Libby, is this water supposed to be hot or cold? Uh, she goes, neither, mommy. Are you trying to put hot water? You're going to bust that windshield out. Yeah, you have a season of problems that you like to call it, mommy, or something crazy, she says. And I said, yeah, that's right. So I go ahead and 
me and my daughter, she warms up, you know, she gets the water and she hands it to me because I need my children to stay warm because this is a season of coldness, y'all, in Texas, which means rope adjusting is high. Um, my children, insurance is not necessarily free, so therefore their prescriptions are not free. I'm in the season of need, not warm, so I don't want them problems. So y'all stay in this house until this car gets warm. So I'm outside dashing the water on her, y'all. I started laughing. I said, my baby is, she fire. I mean, I love her. I love her because she's a thinker. She's like, let's come up with a solution. And she's really good at math as well. So I tell y'all to tell y'all this. Work on your sons. If you wonder why you got such a kind of man when you raise your son and your son, you, you coddle him. That's probably why you got the kind of man you got. That's in real life. I'm just being honest. Like, if you all the time, and I'm not saying don't fix your man's plate, but I haven't read that chapter in the Bible either, y'all, where women are required to fix his plate. See, my ex-husband thought that I was supposed to fix his plate. Bro, I help you pay these bills, bro. I'm bring, bro, I'm setting up the table for you. Bro, I'm sorry. You want me to cook for you? You want me to take my money? Y'all, this, this is where me and me thinking, y'all. Let's, let's just be real. I don't, I'm not producing this kind of man. You want me to go out and work and make the money. Then you want me to go to the grocery store and pick out the groceries, right? And put them in the buggy and take them to the counter and pay for them with my money. And most places, unless you're going to grocery you got to load them yourself in the car. So I have to load the groceries. Y'all save them, okay? You want me to load them up, put them in the car, get home because you get home because you're a man. You relax and you're chilling. I'm supposed to do everything. I'm going to unload it. I'm going to leave out the groceries. I'm going to put up the groceries. And I'm gonna go cook the I'm gonna go cook the food too, y'all. Okay, this man want me to go pay for the bacon, bring home the bacon, cook the bacon, and then serve him the bacon. Well, no way in hell, excuse my language, but no way in hell. That's too much, sir. I'm sorry. Why you play whatever it is, why you be on social media. I'm sorry, women. We put ourselves in these situations that put pressure on us by the things that we do for these men. We shortchange ourselves in real life. I told my ex husband he would say, I'm hungry. Well, we live in Bullock. You pass by every restaurant in the city of Tyler, coming down 69. All the food in Tyler is on Broadway. I know my mama raised me that way. She told me that. So, no, sir, if you're hungry, that's your problem. That's not her problem. You can go in the kitchen because I don't bought the groceries. Cook them. You got options, bro. If your mom didn't teach you how to cook, it's a hot pocket and then use a microwave. And so my husband knew early on in our marriage, before we had children, you better take care of yourself. Because her not here for that. As long as I got to help you do your job, you can help me do my job too. Forcibly, uh, we can do this the easy way or the hard way. But I'm not putting all of this on me anymore. I'm not doing that. And so I'm not going to produce a son that's going to do that. And so even like with his little sister, no, he doesn't get her dressed. But he helps her put on her socks and shoes. He treats her like a lady because Addie Grace is such a lady, y'all. So he'll help her do that or he'll put the ice in the bucket so she can put it in her uh, little thermos for school. But I give all my kids responsibilities according to their age. My son, I tell him because he got upset because Lily Grace is my right hand man. She knows how to do everything I know how to do. But she needs grace, y'all. She's in the ninth grade. And she want to be pretty, y'all. My daughter want to finally be pretty. I was wondering when she was going to realize she was cute, y'all. And she stayed with my mom for the summer. And that spirit of beauty hit her. I thank God for Pig in real life, y'all. Because she helped my daughter turn into a lady. And she needs to be one. So me and Libby Grace are in the season of our femininity. Addie Grace is already a lady. Her best friend is her grandmother who's 62. She knows how to be a lady in real life. And even Addie is teaching me to be a lady, you know? And I learned from her. But we have to set the bar for not only all of our children. But if you got a son, set the bar. Because don't nobody want your sorry son. They don't because you don't want their sorry son. So don't put it, don't pour nothing out that you cannot receive back in. It's like I tell Eddie Grace, when you put bad things in the universe, bad things come back. That's my way of teaching her. You reap what you sow. Um, that, that's, that's me explaining in theory of those things about what we put out, we get back in. So if you put a lot of sorriness into your son and you're in the season of why is this man sorry? Thank God he just gave you the answer this morning. It's because of you. You are reaping your harvest, sis. Absolutely certified from the Holy Spirit. He told you, you reap what you sow. Stop sowing bad seeds. That's in all areas of your life. Your children are your first set of disciples. 
disciple them and disciple them right. Make sure they are thugging for Jesus just as hard as you are. My children, we are 10 toes down. It's four of us. We 40 toes deep up in this game. We went into the new year with a picture of all four of our feet on my Facebook page because we all in this, we stand together united. Therefore, nothing can come in and break us, okay? We don't look, uh uh-uh. We hold each other accountable. We're not looking for a loophole for Satan to just find his way in. You know, we ju- we just not here. That's not our season, y'all. We're in the season of growth, accountability, and responsibility. If you went to Texas College, then you know at an HBCU, they they'll tell you. Miss Edwards told me she says uh, black people don't like uh, responsibility or accountability, and I remember that, y'all, from my college days. We don't as a whole unit, but especially our men. And if we're moms and we're producing, I'm just gonna call them my mom. My mom will call sirens. Don't be upset because you keep on getting a sorry man. If your son don't know to open the door for you and he's old enough, don't be mad because somebody's daughter, uh, son don't open the door for you. Give in the season of what you have right now so you can get the future version of you. Your future man will be what you point into your son. I'm not saying treat your son like your husband. Let me put that disclaimer out there. Don't, don't do that. Don't, don't think your son is your husband and totally cater to him like Beyonce now said let me cater to you if that man not catering to you don't don't cater to him if my son is not pouring into me y'all I don't pour into him I go straight up gangster mode on him Uh, son I cannot give you more than you give me and I mean that okay and my David took a voice and I mean that for real in real life and that goes in every aspect of every type of relationship this the season of compassion is ending y'all because there's too many resources to be feeling sorry for people, okay? Rosa, um, Harriet, Sojourner Truth, Phyllis Wheatley have done too much for us, for us to stop y'all. And I'm. A, this is my last thing and I'm gonna be quiet. Y'all, we gotta stop being those type of passive women because the women that produce the world we live in, they were not passive women, they were assertive women. So I'm not telling you to be aggressive, I'm not telling you to be passive. I'm telling you to be assertive. I'm telling you move woman of God because our next generation of girls need us in order to be who they're going to be in the future. We got to provide that future for them. But it's a lot of women during the season of, oh, I feel so sorry for myself. Oh, I'm a victim. No, 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 you're not. You are victorious is what you are. You're not a victim. Don't claim those bad things about yourself. You're not depressed. You're just going through a situation right now. It's not a bad day. You just had a bad moment, okay? Because every day is a great day. If you open your eyes, even if you can't move, you thank God because he woke you up. Somebody tried to open them this morning, y'all, and they didn't open. The spirit of life was not upon them. If you woke up this morning and and your children are alive, because I tell my kids, if you die between the hours of midnight and 6 a.m., that's on God, because I protected you until about 12, okay? So from 6 to 12, I worry about my children living in real life, but not just their physical life, y'all. You got to worry about their spiritual life, y'all. And I'm going to stop because I could go on and on and on about some things with my children and with futuristic children, y'all. So I'll just save a little for another day. But Nina's done. Thank y'all so much. Do y'all have any questions, comments, or thoughts um, before uh, Queen Mother, a.k.a. Pig, or a.k.a. Peggy Roxbury takes the mic? Good morning, Nan. Wait. Okay. Hello. Good morning, Regina. We can hear you. Okay. I was like, whoa, I don't have my earbuds in. I was like, I might should have did something different. I got another Zoom thing at work this morning. So I got to not wear my earbuds today. Um, Nan, always, just always, you always do a great job. I always keep it real. I always bring it. Um, just look so forward to 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 you and I totally agree with what you're saying about you know raising a child to be you know your son to be how you want your man to be that's very important very important so a lot of the stuff you said you know I was laying here thinking um yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna be putting some of that in force around here you know Um, 
like I say, uh, even with my oldest son, Squeak, they, you know, you're not too old to get a whooping. In fact, it comes to time like now, they're, uh, well, Avery too, Squeak was too, too, too big to whoop, baby. It's, it's blows. It's, it's a fight and you better not, and it's, and it's really a fight if you try to hit me back. So, you know, it's, 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 it's that's what, uh, you know, what I always tell them. I was like, yeah, no, we don't, we don't, we don't do that. We don't do that. So, but I just want to say, let you know, you did a, an awesome job and it's always, always always just just love your joy and i can't wait for your mom to come up because i know she's gonna be the bomb too thank you thank you you just gave me confirmation the holy spirit showed up it wasn't me that was the holy spirit <laughs> amen <laughs> good morning good morning hi good morning i just want to start in georgia message and it just hit home for me this morning because i woke up this morning and I was just kind of thinking about what Marilyn was saying about, you know, giving yourself your time in the morning. And it's, I was thinking, and this all week I just been praying, like, Lord, give me the tools for my son. He's 16 now, and I'm always just praying and praying. And this morning, that was my prayer. And then you come right on and start speaking up. So you just been a blessing this morning. Because I just be telling, like, Lord, I can't send him out the high seat. I not know how to do anything for himself. I just kept seeing him, and he's just 16, he'd be on my mind like, he would not, I, I tell him the other day, I said, you would not ruin another young lady's life. And he's like, what did you talk about? I'm like, you got to do this, and you got to learn how to do this, and I'm thinking he thinks I'm crazy. Like, you got to go in there, you got to mop that bathroom, and you got to do this, and you got to do that. No one, uh, your mother, when you leave me, you have left your mother. Remember that. So it's just, what you were saying was just amazing, it's a blessing. It's just confirmation, and I just want to thank you for this message this morning, because I promise you, that prayer was on my mind this morning when I woke up. Time I opened my eyes. Glory be to God. Yeah. You don't want your son to give somebody something that you don't want, so you give your son the best version of the type of man that you would want somebody else's daughter to have. Um so that you can return, can receive it. Sometimes you have to give things that you don't have in a season for what you want. You got to make those deposits, like Miss Marilyn said, you have to make deposits into your future. And so by me pouring into my son to make him better, not for me, but better for someone else's daughter, because I too have daughters. In turn, even if I don't get that man, God doesn't promise that your harvest will be you know, given back to you. I have children, I have daughters. So even if the next man, my daughter is their husband, is what my son is. I'm grateful for that. In that season, I still received my harvest. Good morning, Nancy. Good morning. Hey, um, yeah, you um, you really um, spoke on me. Uh, it, this happened yesterday. Um, you know, I uh, typically take my uh, uh, son's phone away from him, and um, he doesn't, you know, get it to the, to the morning. But anyways, I noticed he had this girl on his um, cell phone. I'm trying to talk quiet. I'm in, the I'm in the closet in my secret space and stuff, but I'm in the closet, y'all. Yeah. And Miss Marilyn, them know what that means when I'm in the closet. But um, I got to wake him up in a little bit. But um, he had this girl on his phone and I had, um, I said, that's your little girlfriend? Because I saw the little, the little name Bay come up and all that. I said, okay, she look cute. Look, look, look like a little Hispanic or something like that or whatever. But anyway, um, I said, well, you're not going to get this phone until uh you get done cleaning your room and, and cleaning that bathroom up i said because um 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 you're not fit to uh be distracted or whatever so he um uh, he does all of that and i um uh, meanless to say i asked him to crank up that car because I, I make him every morning crank that car up and warm the car up in the morning and so the first time i asked him i said cartel make sure you go out there and crank that car up so a couple of minutes went by i said cartel go crank the car up and then so that third time I realized, cause it's, it's getting close to me, you know, having to go to work and it's cold outside. And um, I saw, yeah, I, uh, <clears throat> it came out of me. I saw him, he was um, doing like a little selfie uh, pitch. I said, I said, nigga, why you ain't crank this car? I'm sorry, yeah. I said, nigga, why you ain't crank this car up? I said, I told you to crank this car up. I said, you know what, as a matter of fact, give me this phone. I said, give me this phone right now. I said, um, you know, I said, uh, uh, when I tell you to do something, you need to do it. I shouldn't tell you three times to do nothing. I said, uh, 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 I said for that, you, you know, I said, don't, you know, TV or nothing like that. So 
he grabs the keys, it's the way he grabbed me. He's like, okay, like what an attitude. And I'm sorry, I, it kicked out of me. And so I had, you know, I kind of got a little rough with him. Had the man handle him. I said, uh, what's wrong with you? You know, I said, you know, I, I said, you know what? You give me the keys. I said, I'll go crank the car up myself. So I cranked the car up, had the man hand him a little bit. You know, I was a little upset that I had to do that, you know, and stuff like that. But I'm just making a point to say these boys are hard to handle. And sometimes I have to, you know, I hate when I have to get out of my, you know, feminine role and get masculine, but I do have to manhandle my son sometimes. And I don't like, I don't like to do it, but I have to do it because I told him, I said, you know what, Cartrell? I said, um, whoever this girl you talking to, you don't need to be worrying about no girl. I said, heck, you can't even clean up your room. You, you, I, I said, you can't even do this and you can't do that. I said, what woman going on a, a, a man that's not cleaning up behind himself? I said, you know what? I said, you 13, th what, four, what, 13 years old, 13 years, we've been struggling with you keeping the room clean and picking up stuff behind yourself. I said, um, this is, you know, getting ridiculous. I said, um, you don't need no, um, no girlfriend. You don't need nothing. I said, cause you can't even, you can't even um, keep this house clean. So right now he is grounded a little bit. Um, you know, he can watch a little TV, but he's not getting that phone. And so I noticed that he, um, this girl had been sending him some little stuff and, and uh, inappropriate things. And I'm going to go through that phone whenever I get time to talk mm -hmm. to him. But I'm just saying, um, to make a point that say, Nancy, yeah, you, you hit the nail because we had an altercation yesterday. When I asked you to do something, I need you to do it right away. I shouldn't even have to t ask you three times, but I'm trying to work on myself. And it's hard because I, I mean, I do have a, 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 you know, a bad mouth, but I'm trying to work on me. It's kind of hard to work on me when you're not doing things right. You know, I'm telling you, mama's mm -hmm. trying to work on her words. I'm trying to work on not, you know, cursing or doing so much. But when you, when I, when you, when you push my button, you, 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 you force me to get that, get, you know, get that way. And I don't like getting out of character, especially if I'm trying to work on myself. And we've had these heart to heart talks, you know, mama trying to work on this. When I ask you to do it, if you want me to be nice to you, do it the first time. And I promise I won't have to yell at you. Oh, mama, you yelling at me every time. Well, son, if I ask you more than once, you're going to get yelled at. You're going to get punched. You're going to get choked. You're going to get in headlocks around here because I should only tell you one time to do something. I don't like getting in that because I don't want to be on high blood pressure pills. I don't want to have high blood pressure or none of that. I want to I wanna have a beautiful skin. I want to. I don't want to have all that stress on me. Cause I got a man handle you when you, when I asked you to do some uh, uh, several times. So, anyways, um, you had got me on it because we we definitely got into it yesterday. He's thirteen. He's um, he's at that age now. Uh, whoopings don't even uh, matter. I, I mean, I got these nails on. I was scared I was gonna break a nail, so I had to stop doing what I was doing because I was getting a little scared and stuff. The little, the little nigga kind of buffed up on me, and I had to kind of get lucky if you buck on him a little bit. But that that's, right. just, that's just what I have to do because. <clears throat> until I get a man that can come in his life and play that role, I'm going to do what I need to do. Because again, like you say, you don't need to have a man to do everything. I grew up for a single, from a single mom house and I came out just great. If I got if I got to do what I got, I just do what I got to do to take care of mine because ain't nobody going to take care of mine but me, but me. So thank you so much. You spoke into me. I'm just going to have to get him up this morning and make sure he do what he needs to do. And I'm going to make him crank that call up again this morning. We're going to see if he's going to hear me one time today. Thank you. Yes, and I, I want to share too. I, I did hear you say I gotta wake him up. Um, you said he's thirteen. Jesus preached a sermon at twelve. Uh, he, I have a seven-year-old nephew. Yes, Lord, he wakes himself up. Mm -hmm. So I challenge you, like you're gonna remind him to move that car. Uh, and he has a phone. He has phone back to him to set a timer. The car needs to be crunk at a certain time. Um, wake him up. Step up. Um, because in the future he's gonna have to wake himself up for a job. He's thirteen in three years. He'll be able to work. So you got to prepare him because he's not going to start waking up to get to work on time at 16 if he's not prepared right now. That's just my little 50 cents of a thought. And you have everything you need. If you have to look, if you book him sometimes, absolutely, mom, you are certified. God said if he's probably spare the ride, just spoil the child. So you're not raising a spoiled son. Um, expectations. He will meet them uh, 7 o'clock or whatever time to start that car. You can wake up and get dressed. You like to sit in your bed, wake up at 6.45 and sit on your bed for 15 minutes. That part, son. Because you're screaming at him and you're showing him what his wife, what he's going to cause his wife to do. He's going to cause her to scream. He's going to her to, cause her to yell. He's going to cause her to be angry. So you're giving him an example of what his future is going to look like. And if he don't like the way mama doing it, he don't like the way she doing it. And see his wife. 
He, and, and I'm not saying your son is a violent person, but a lot of times men, they, they're not going to repeat their mama, but they be wanting to. But his wife go with him and say some things or, or do some things his mom may do. He may try to trigger back. And so even training him to contain his rage inside of wanting to knock mama out. The same way you feel about mama, you better feel about your wife. So that part. But yeah, thank you for sharing. Amen, ladies. Um, Y'all, I tell you all the messages this morning, uh, raising a boy child is not easy at all. It really is not. And I would say, ladies, as quickly as you can, um, you know, remember we talk a lot about get yourself in another room, uh, get in a room uh, to where you can get the tools that you need to raise your young men, you know, because, um, you know, everybody has a different parenting style. And you want to find that style that fits who you are in your spirit, you know, because that's what it is. It's not how mom did things, how dad did things or whatever. There's a parenting style that's within your spirit that the Lord wants you to follow. And everything that we do, he said, whether it be in word or in deed, make sure you do it as unto the Lord. So I would say make sure to get in those rooms that you can get in uh, to learn as much as you can. You know, uh, because, um, you know, you're, you're teaching them both the masculine and the feminine role uh, side to things, because every now and then uh, the reality of life is going to appear before them because, you know, um, um, you know, if you if you're in, in a two parent home, they would be able to see that mommy does not do everything in the house. Daddy does not do everything in the house. Uh, they share in this responsibility. And when you're in single parent homes, sometimes you only see one side of it, you know, so getting them into environments to where they can see uh, what two parent households look like, even if they have to visit grandma, aunties or whatever, grandpa and grandpa, aunties and uncle, uh, so that they can actually see these things so that they can have a, you know, different perspective. It's just that being in a single parent home is not something that, you know, we desire, but this is where we are right now. So it's going to be very, very important that we get those male figures around them. And then ladies, I, I know the struggle that's out there. I would say to you guys, start asking God for those mentors to start coming into your young boy's life early because the mentors may not be family members, but this is why it's going to be important. Get in the right church setting get on the right job that you need to be on, you know, uh, explore, get out in different places because whatever it is that you need, I promise you, I promise you, God will provide those things. But everything come, comes from the asking. We see that there's an issue. We see that there's a problem. We want to ask God, all right, Lord, where is the sacrifice over here? Where are the things that we need? So Miss Nancy, wonderful job. And thank you for uh, taking us into the boy boy world and uh, helping us to see uh, a lot of time that is why we're getting the results of some of the men that we're seeing right now because we have coddled them a little too much, you know, but, um, you know, learning different techniques and measures to go about handling that. So we want to say thank you so much for always just bringing a power pack message and blessing our hearts with that. And I know you're probably going to get more messages to come behind this. Others are trying to figure out, well, what are some of the techniques and tools that you you need, you use? And, you know, I pray that God will allow you to bless the kingdom with those things as well. So we want to say thank you so much. Uh, Y'all, the hour is moving along and we're ready for Mrs. Uh, Peggy, uh, which is Mrs. Uh, uh, Nancy's mom, uh, to come in. And she's going to be talking about parenting on that adult side of things, you know, because a lot of times we may think that. You know, it's all over with once the children grown, whatever. But as you can see what Mrs. Nancy is talking about, uh, sometimes the job was not finished uh, before the child left home. And there are going to be some other things. There will be other people that will come along into their lives uh, to come in and help them to navigate through these things. And I do believe that God has uh, ushered in different people in different seasons in our life. And I believe that uh, what Mrs. Uh, Peggy shares with us each week help us to understand those things. So Ms. Peggy, we're going to turn it over to you this morning. And thank you so much, Ms. Nancy. We appreciate you so, so, so much. And thank y'all for all the comments on this morning as well. Good morning. Good morning, Ms. Peggy. Again, I got my grandbaby. We're on our way to school. So 
Are you talking to each other? No, no. Is that one, one sentence, right? Yes. Okay. I just want to make sure it's right. I'm sorry. Let me get you a battery, remember? I hope you have an amazing day today. Thank you, baby. Thank you. Okay, I'm sorry, y'all. Um, you know, I just refuse to not to not come on this show. <laughs> Regardless of what I'm doing, even if I'm flying a plane, I just feel like I need to be here to help somebody. At least I hope I can help someone each time I come on. Uh, first, giving honor to God, because I know, um, shoot, whatever, whatever is coming today, it's the spirit of the Lord. So to, uh, in my head, I had planned to talk to you guys about just, 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 just being humble, being humble. I'm pretty sure you guys are in your 30s, 40s, maybe 50s. I'm mainly hitting at those guys because they're in the middle of, you know, the career thing, uh, maybe being a leader, supervisor, or, or just in general working. And I come to you today to let you know that even from a child, people see you. You know, people say these days, they say like, I see you. Well, people have been seeing you all along. Uh, tell you a story about when I was like 10 years old, 12 years old, somewhere in there, we had a neighbor that planted grass, took the whole neighborhood to plant grass. And this started like when I was 10 or 12. People see you even when you're a child. So when I was coming up, yeah, we planted grass. So, but in the in this grass thing of planting grass, I ended up, in the, ended up learning how to cut the grass, not only just plant the grass, but cut the grass, and not only just cutting the grass, driving to pick up the adults that was a lot older than me and dropping them off at work to plant the grass that I had cut. So I ended up being like a little supervisor back then and didn't know it. A lot of times, God puts you in places and you don't really understand why you do it, but he do it. So that's why I always use the term, but God. So the skills that I had coming through, which is the skills that you have coming through as a child, you're going to be able to use those. You probably can see that now. People see you. I still say people see you. I'll use uh, Miss uh, Regina Spencer. I used to work for her. I, did, I worked for her for about five to seven years, something like that, at night. And when I first started there, I was wiping tables with joy. Uh, ended up in the supervisor there until I left. All I'm saying is, People see you. Even when I started working on a college level, I had I had coworkers would say to me, don't do that. Or oh, they're just working you to death. They're not paying you for that. And I know y'all heard that on your job. Don't be doing that. You're not getting paid for that. And some of you are like bold enough to be like, that's not, a, that's not my job title. Well, it's a blessing in everything. On my job, didn't know it, but I was learning how to become a director, learning how to become a, uh, a supervisor, a, a, a vice president, even I would say a president because I know I'm strong enough now to do that. But what I'm trying to tell you guys is when people ask you to do things like do, you know, like paperwork or like run an area, errand or go somewhere, or, you know, do something for somebody, don't always feel like they're using you. Even if you felt like they were using you. At that period of time, if it's, your, if it's in your job title or if it's in your job era, Go ahead and do it anyway, because somebody see you. Each time that I have, no matter what job I've had or where, what state I've worked in, someone saw me. People see things in you that you can't see in yourself. That's a lot of reason why they ask you to do it. But even if they don't ask you to do it in that way, don't take it as they're using you. You take that and keep that because knowledge is power. And God wouldn't have put you in that spot if he didn't want you to see that and learn how to do that. So when you are out there working every day, guys, don't look at life like, oh, Lord, I got to get away from this job because they just want me to do everything. They're not paying me for this. They're not paying me for that. But what will happen is you go ahead and take those tools. Those are tools that you're getting from uh, everybody in all the areas where you're working at that you're going to have to use later on at another job. That's going to make your job even greater. So I know you've heard the term, it, get, it gets greater later. It does get greater later. Even at home, when you got things going on at your house, you don't have to ask. 
don't don't ask if it needs to be done just do it it's okay even if it's not your title do it i go back and talk about uh, uh miss regina spencer again I, I worked at her place and she never to this day or i haven't even heard you know a lot of times you hear people talking but i still haven't and this we talking maybe 30 years ago so we're talking years and years ago about people and people do talk they even gossip but when you're on a job and you're doing and performing that and more, you're not gonna hear anything. You'll be able to breathe. It's only when you, if you, if you go to your job and do what you're supposed to do, you won't have to worry about that. And if your boss or your supervisor asks you to do something extra, you call it extra, I call it knowledge. So learn that knowledge is power. And I'm pretty sure all you guys know that, but in general, if you would just, you know, just embrace what your supervisors are giving you, go ahead and do it. Even, 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 you know, you can go home. It doesn't have to, you don't, you don't get paid for everything. Our money is not good money. So when people ask you to do something on your job, or if you're at home doing something, just go ahead and do it. I mean, it's okay. It's gonna benefit you more than it's gonna benefit someone else. But self-preservation comes first. And if you learn all of these tools now, before you leave home, or as you're growing through life in these different jobs, or if you're on a career, it will certainly make you feel better in the future because after a while, you don't know it, but even on your jobs, you're doing multitask jobs anyway. But just because it's not written out there, or you hadn't thought that you were, you know, that it's not on your, it's not on your title and you're just doing it, you're doing it anyway. But for the most of it, if you recognize, a lot of you recognize that, oh, that's not, a, that's not my job title, I'm not doing that. Well, it may not be your job title, but it might become your job title in a, in a, in a blessed way. You never know, because like I said in the beginning, someone see you. And that's what I wanted to bring to you guys today. I didn't want to talk a lot, but I wanted to get to the point to let you know that when you're on these jobs, especially when you have a good boss, and you don't want a boss that or doing, you know, looking around the corner at you, trying to watch to see if you're doing it. If you don't know that job, work with your supervisor and make sure you're effectively, make sure you're doing what you need to do. But on the other end of it, if I were you, I'd learn that job too. That's what I've always been good at. I mean, if you're doing something that I like to do, that's what I do. I wanted to become a grant writer. This was years ago. So I, I connected with a girlfriend in California, a girlfriend in Ohio. I just started connecting with people that I wanted to be a life. So things that you want to be, or want to become, or want to feel of it, you get with people that are doing those things. It's not going to be at your house. It's not going to be your neighbors or your family sometimes. But it's, it's going to be people in your life. And God, you know, you ask God for this stuff. And he'll, he'll, get it, he'll give it right to you. Um, I never wanted to be anyone's boss or anyone's director or anyone's nothing like that. But I have been put on the forefront of everything in my life because people see you. It's like the word you use nowadays, I see you. People see what you're doing and they put you out there. And that's why I became, I became who others saw of me because that's what they could see in me. So people see you. So whatever you're doing now, if they don't see you at that, at that job, you, doors are open and you'll be somewhere else for somebody really see you. So don't worry about that term in life. And then when it comes down to, I wanted to let you know that making money, you know, I've known guys in my life that made, I'm not talking about just guys, I'm talking about girls and guys in general, have made a, you know, hundred, hundred thirty, hundred forty thousand dollars $140,000 a year. And they still didn't have nothing. They don't own a house. Actually, I knew someone that was homeless, making money like that, you know? So it's not how much you make, it's what you do with what you make. When I left Waterburgers with Regina, Spencer, and went, 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 I decided to take a job over at Texas College. My baby girl told me we're poor now. She says, we're poor now. We're not, we're not, making, we're not, we're not making lots of money. So I wasn't, I wasn't even making the money, and I was making good money at Waterburgers. But I thought that I would be making great money but at, when I went you know, to work at Texas College. But what I was looking at, you know, you got to keep your eyes on the prize. 
If you get me, I'm the person that if I get my foot in the door, I got it. Because all I have ever asked the Lord for was my life, health, and strength. So if you give me those, if the Lord give me those three things, everything else runs. So if you guys look to the Lord to give you your life, health, and strength, and then I can add on to that. Now, you know, you still have your mental status up there. You'll be able to do great in life in anything that you do. So, you know, I hope I could give you something to let you know that you can be just as professional on, you might call it a little job, as you can on a big job. I don't think there's no such thing as a little job anymore. It never have been. You just have to grow to that level to see. When I was working at Whataburger, I took that job as if it was like, uh, like I was making a hundred thousand dollars a year. You know, I, you know, everything that I did, I did it with grace. And you know, if I swept a floor, I swept that floor with a smile. I wiped the tables off with a smile. Everything you do, you do it with grace. And the Lord just opened and opened and opened. So from the time I was a child, even planting the grass, I always did it taken with a smile. So all the way through life, I've walked my way through life you know, walking in grace and mercy and the Lord have just constantly opened doors and opened doors and opened doors. You'll be surprised how God will bless you if you carry your job and carry your life with grace. You'll get more, more than, you know, the overflow that God give you, it'll keep flowing over and over again. So um, I just wanted to let you know that if, you know, you take these jobs. I knew once I got in Texas College door, I knew I could move. I knew I could move around because when I was at Waterburgers, I did it at every little job before Waterburgers, I did that. So you have to know you and what you want to do and what you can do and what you can't do. Get with people that will teach you how to do it. And don't be afraid to allow people to teach. And th that's the spirit of the Lord. When somebody come in there and see that you are bigger and see that you could do more, embrace them. Embrace people that's trying to give you. So that's a gift from God because they don't have to do that. I mean, waking up this morning is a gift from God. Learn your gifts. Learn to be grateful. Learn to embrace what God has coming to you. A lot of times it doesn't look good. Did I want to do everything these folks asked me to do? No. But I took it with grace. And I never said a word to this day. And I, and you know, I just kept going and going. And so that's what you do in life in order to have, in order to be at peace when you get older. So go ahead and prepare yourselves now to just run through these jobs and be grateful and do the things that need to be done. And when people ask you to do something extra, it's not really extra. I think it's something in the, you know, in the spirit of the Lord, letting you know, hey, you need to learn this. Hey, you need to learn this. You need to put this up under your belt. And so that's all that is. The Lord is just talking to you. It's not all the time those people, they may come at you in a jerky way sometimes, but you know, just again, y'all, you know, we use the word, I heard it yesterday, the word hush. Yeah. Just hush. Take it. As long as, long as, long as you're not getting mistreated, and as long as you're not getting disrespected, and if they're ordering you to, you know, to do things like ordering your step at that job, go ahead and do it and be graceful because you never know what may pop up on the screen. You may get to fill out another application. You may know, you may not know, you didn't know someone from out of state, someone you once knew, like happened to me, may call you from states, four or five states over, 10 states over, to want you to come there and do things. Why? because they know who you are and know you can do it. So uh, that's pretty much uh, my story for today. And thank you for listening. And I hope I uh, you know, tapped in on someone's life. Thank you. And you all have a great day. Love you guys. Amazing, now amazing. Amazing job, uh, Ms. Peggy. The, the, you know what? I just wanted to make a comment on that. You know, I think that's one of the hardest thing is uh, delayed gratification. Sometimes we uh, miss that um, part in the building blocks of life is when we're taught about delayed gratification. You know, they used to sing this song in, in, in the old church, you know, in the old folks churches, they say, put your time in, payday's coming after a while. You know, that was in one of the sanctified churches. They used to sing it all the time. Put your time in, payday is coming after a while. And I think what they were trying to say to us was, um, you know, uh, wait your turn. You know, uh, a lot of things we had to learn, you know, in the church and, you know, the, you know, people say, you know, we would just church to death with a lot of things. I think the church was trying to do the best that they could 
uh, to share with us some principles in life. But in reality, what they were what they were singing about was about real life. You got to get in here and do the work, you know, and sometimes and I love what you said, Peggy, sometimes the places that we start at, you know, they are just building blocks for where you're going to go, because what the Lord is looking for is a spirit of humility. You know, will you be humble? Will you learn? Will you, you know, make a make something out of nothing? You know, because somebody will pay attention to your potential. I saw in the chat box where Mrs. Um, Mrs. Regina, she said, I saw the leader in you. You know, whereas you may not see that that's in you. And when you get in the right places and, and ladies, uh, one thing I've learned, all you need is favor. You don't need a lot of money. You don't need a lot of prestige. You don't need any of that. You need favor over your life. And favor comes from some strange places. Sometimes when you just show up to do something that nobody else wanted to do, you know, you show up to, you know, um, I always say this, you know, be in the hands and feet of God, even in the mouthpiece of God, you show up to just, you know, lend a helping hand. And most of the time we lend in places that we wish this was something, something somebody would do for us. I promise you it's going to open up doors for you. And uh, I love the testimonies that you're sharing, Miss Peggy, because life is not, you know, uh, very easy. It's not going to be a cookie cutter or anything like that. You got to walk through this thing. And when you've never seen these things done in a family, you may be the one that has to pave the way. You may be the trailblazer to let everyone know that anything is possible. So thank you. That was definitely encouragement to me. And, uh, and I see how God has continued to elevate you, you know, over the years. You know, it's because you took a little bit of something and made something great out of it. You put yourself before the right people, you know, so that you could be seen at whatever particular time. And the main person that you put yourself before is God. You know, Lord, if you can use anything in me, you know, do that. And I guarantee you, ladies, uh, people will help sponsor you. You know, money is not the issue. It's favor. If you don't have money, I promise you somebody will pay your way. If they see something in you and they know that you are giving the best that you can give at all times, somebody will come in there and they will literally pave the way because one, that's something they, they wish somebody else would have done for them. And just having an opportunity to come in and bless other people, um, it is absolutely amazing. That's that's what life is to many of us. So thank you, Ms. Peggy, for those words. And we'll open it up for anybody else that may have comments this morning. Hi, good morning. This is Shirley. Um, I know I got on late because I had so much going on. It seemed like all of my group homes, but I needed to hear that because I um, I work a lot. I work a whole lot, but I also ask my, and I continue to ask myself, and I know God got something different for me, and I even thank God for my pay just because I work a lot. And because I, I always say, not just being here at this place where I'm at, but somebody have to work with these people. I work with uh, IDD people. And somebody have to work with them. And it have to be somebody that cares for them. Because I always say that even when I leave, because I know God has something for me, even when I leave, I want these people to be taken care of. This morning was like a morning from hell. I was up all night last night and I did not even know that I went to sleep and it was scary because it, it had to be a scary sleep because it's a man to come here every morning at six o'clock. He said he rung on the doorbell. He called me several times. I didn't hear anything. I didn't hear anything at all. And um, he came in and everything and I was just lost when I finally opened up the door and realized what time it was and I realized he said you don't because he listened to y'all because I'm listening to y'all he said you're not listening to your ladies this morning I said I don't know what happened to me I said I just went into a, a deep sleep but it was a peaceful sleep and stuff and and like I said because I keep thinking about the people that I work with and the reason why I'm working so hard because I don't have enough staff and that's and you know and I said if I had enough staff everything would be smoothly. But I thank God for my job. I really do. I thank God for my job. I thank God for what I'm doing for, I'm in the people's lives and they are in my life. They teach me a whole lot. And a lot of people would, would say that 
It's not a good job. You don't make enough money. And I say it all the time. It's not about the money. It's not about the money at all. It's about what I can do and how they helping me in return. And that's what I got to say this morning because I don't know why I'm so emotional. <laughs> Amen, Shirley. I hear I hear your heart and I hear your push. And I know you probably needed that rest. You know, every now and then, you know, we find ourselves in in strange, we feel like in strange places, like, you know, Lord, what is going on? This seems to be so unusual. Um, I just believe that God is up to some major, major things in our lives. And it's for us to stay in the press. You know, it's so easy to give up on things, throw in the towel. You know, but that's not who we are. You know, we are breakfast of champions. You know, we hang in there. We stick to this thing. And but we ask God for directions, ask God for, you know, insight and instruction. You know, it, it, it sometimes, uh, you know, people will think that, well, you're just doing that just to be doing. No, I'm following the leading of God. I'm not going to just leave somebody in limbo, you know, um, just leave them out there. But I am talking to God about what those next steps are. And sometimes it can become uh, very emotional. You know, I think about some stages that I'm going through right now. Y'all, when I tell you I have to pull my bootstraps up each and every day, I'm talking about every day. I have to learn how to encourage myself in the Lord. You know, I've got to make sure to remind myself that God is for me and he is not against me. I have to remind myself that this too shall pass. I have to remind myself, Lord God, that, you know, what he says in Psalms 91, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high God shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. Y'all, it makes me happy when I just start thinking about that. And somewhere in between those things that I stand in need of that maybe I didn't know how to ask for, when I find myself in the, in the presence of God, he comes in to fulfill me. He comes in to add value to me. He comes in to just speak to my heart, to let me know, Marilyn, it's almost over. It's kind of like getting, going through surgery or going through treatment or whatever. And it's like, oh my God, those beginning stages are so rough. They're so hard. I don't know if I can make it through, but that's where God bring those spotters along the way. And I hope that Breakfast of Champions is becoming those spotters to you to let you know, come on, sis, you can make it. You can raise those boys. You know, you can do this in life. You know, you can be the best that you can be. You can show up every day. You know, uh, you are better than that. You're greater than that. You know, uh, just you. Know, it's just a lot of things that we have to keep telling ourselves, keep talking to ourselves. And and sometimes you may be your only uh, your only um, uh, what they say. You may be the only person in the crowd. <laughs> That's what it feels like in the stands. But that's OK. If you keep on pushing, somebody else is going to show up. They may just come later to the party, but I guarantee you they're not going to come until they're supposed to come. So uh, Shirley, just stay in the press. You know, we're praying for you. And I thank God that you got the rest that you got, you know, this morning. And because there's always replays, you can go back and listen to the replay over and over again. But I uh, just know that God's got you right where you are. So uh, thank you so much. Anybody else this morning? Miss Peggy is here to answer any questions or share, you know, in her experience for those of you that may, you know, need a word from her as well. Amen. Nobody, no, no other, no further comments this morning. Amen. Well, Miss Peggy, I definitely want to say that I, I always enjoy, you know, hearing you. And it's so good to, um, you know, hear mothers on the other side or just women on the other side of 50, you know, and I think Peggy, you may have said you're in your 60s now, but you still look good. You still sound so full, like you got full, you're still full of life. You know, and there's so much more that God wants to add to you. You know, you give me hope in so many different ways. And I thank God that, um, you know, he comes in to refresh our souls. I thank you for, you know, your sound and your witness in the room. Also, it, it gives a, I don't know, y'all have given me a place where I can, um, I feel like I can rest more. You know, because it's something is you feel like sometimes the lady, what she say, the lady that lived in the shoe with all the children. Sometimes you feel like you're you're doing a lot of things on your own. But when God sends help along the way, man, when I tell you, I appreciate it so much. And I pray that, 
you know, um, in this season that God would continue to speak to your heart, you know, about those places where you can serve and the, where you can give. And I hope that, you know, Breakfast of Champions would be one of those places that you have found, uh, you have found your second wind at, you know, and uh, we definitely appreciate it. Miss Regina, I see your hand. If there's anybody else, uh, before we close the lines, if you would go ahead and raise your hands up, we're going to go ahead and get you and then we'll get ready to close out this morning. Miss Regina. Good morning. Oh, I was just going to say, um, I see where Miss um, Ladriba put that she have a question, but her mic's not working. I think she put it in the chat. Peggy, you know, I love you, you the bone, but I just was trying to make sure you saw that Miss Miss Merlin, okay. where, Ms., where she has a question. I think she put it in the chat, though. Thank you. All right. Let's see. Okay, she said my wife, my mic is not working, but I have a question. Uh, let me see. Did you put the question in the chat box? Let's see, Miss Aldriba, if you can put it in there, I will. I will pull that question if you could. Uh, I'm trying to run up the line, but I don't see anything just yet. All right. Um, she said, "How to right. handle um, a difficult employee?" Uh, I see it. Okay. All right, she's um, yes. How to handle it in leadership in a leadership role besides prayer? That's what she asked. Okay. All right. Yes. Mrs. Miss Peggy, would you like to answer that one? I can. Yes. Um, the question was how to how to handle how to handle an employee in a leadership role. Okay. Yes, yes ma'am. Ma okay. <laughs> You know, everybody not as bold as I am, but I, I give you all the doors to be open in a professional way. You have to be bold. Um, communication is the key. I am the person that I call the president's employees, the peons. So I don't go to them. I go to him. So when you, when you have that employee, sit that employee down. And you may have to get their boss and sit both of them down at the same time and, and you speak your piece. You all talk about it in a professional way. Because after all, I don't know if I can need the word, use the word need, but I can say enjoy your job. After all, everybody enjoy their job. So I, my advice is communication. I have always communicated really well with everybody that I worked with. And I've learned through the days of my life working you go right to that person and, and to keep things on the same level so everybody would know at the same time, you put everybody involved right there. And once you put them all right there, see, I'm, I'm an open book on my job when it comes to um, business. I, I'm strictly business. And if something is going on, it can be my boss. I'm going to sit my boss down because we need to talk. So, you know, it's nothing about, oh, don't ever be afraid of, or if I talk to him or talk to her, I'm gonna get fired. Guess what? You won't get fired, especially if you're talking about something that concerns your job, that concerns what's going on at work. It is something that to got to do with work to make work better because after all, you go, you're working in the vision of your boss. So if you're doing something to make his vision better or to make his vision come to light, you need to communicate about it. I mean, sit everybody down. Don't sit one person down so they can go say, she said, she said, or he said, he said. You sit them all down and that way it will always be peace on your job. Because they know if they come to you or if something is going on with you, we gonna talk about it. So I think the best thing to do is communication. I've always like, you know, they call it go to the top. I've always gone to the top because I know if I kill the head, the body will die. I've always known that. So uh, that's the advice that I have is communicate and bring all the people that are involved to the table. Settle it, settle it like adults. Don't fight about it because there's no fight about it. Don't fight, we're adults, we are adults. We're everybody grown. Talk about it, talk about it, talk about it. I mean, in that circle and what goes on in that room, stay in that room, you know, talk about it. I mean, I haven't ever had a job that we couldn't talk about it. I mean, I'm not trying to bring you to me so we can get fired or so I can get fired. I mean, but I've always known to have one, have more than one way of making a dollar too. So you have to be smart with yourself. 
you know, set the people down and just talk to them. Because I think another day, I, I think I need to talk about uh, always have more than one way to make a dollar. I mean, you can't just depend on that thing because if you're afraid of you might get fired, it'd be like, the answer would be like, so what? So I've been like a, so what in my lifetime? I had, I, I've never had like one way of making a dollar. You know, I've always figured it out. So with, with that being said, just communicate, but communicate professionally. I would advise you to go in and talk, you know, really, I use the word jerky, really jerky. Don't be jerky to anybody because everybody is somebody. And because you got a title, let's, for example, if you're a manager or a supervisor, and, and, and I work for you, well, in my head, I feel you know better than me. We both are adults. We can talk about this. You know, we both are smart. We both at the same job. So we both can talk about these things, okay? So, you know, that's how I handle it, you know? You know and it works. That's good, Peggy. Uh, I, I, I'm a, I agree with you on that one. I think sometimes, uh, we fail to know uh, our role of importance. You know, we come to the table with different things. You know, um, I understand the thing about supporting us and all of that, but you got to know who you are and, you know, uh, what, what God has called you to do. Otherwise, people will always have the upper hand uh, on your emotions. And before long, that's how people um, burst out with emotional lashes and different things like that sometimes when uh, we don't know that we have a seat at the table to talk about different things so I think a lot of things also is about building relationships with individuals you know uh, and we do have different personalities you know because I've seen Peggy uh, in in action on the job and we all have different personalities with different things but your bosses know that as well they should know who you are as an individual so when you show up, you know, whether you are the quiet one, whether you are the, uh, you know, the most the talkative one or whatever, whatever you do, whenever you do make a sound, make it count. Make it count so that when others hear you, that they will respect you. Go ahead, Ms. Peggy. And, and I, was, I would add on to that. When you wake up in the morning, and I'm including myself, when you wake up in the morning, even if you're doing like me, go get going to get a Red Bull. You know, at the service station, I need a Red Bull sometime in the morning. Wish I could have one every morning. But, you know, whatever you do before you leave out that house, make sure you look presentable. When you walk on your job, you walk with authority. You know, you don't walk like you're better than someone. Don't ever think that. You always stay humble. I think humbleness has been the key to me because right now, even though I've worked in higher ed, don't you know I will plant grass right now if the man was still alive to, to hire me? I'm not afraid to go to Whataburgers and work. I'm not afraid if Long John Silver was still open work, basket and robin. I'm not afraid to mop a floor. I've been a maid before. I mean, I tried to be a maid, you know, to clean up the house and get paid for it. You know, my kid was just little bitty things, you know, while I was going through college, trying to get more degrees under my belt. But, you know, you have to be humble. Learn how to be humble in everything you do, but yet look presentable because a lot of times, if you look a certain way, and they got on a suit, like, you know, the president wear a suit. That's, you know, I've been living with, you know, the life of a president. So he wear a suit every day. Well, heck, if he wear a suit every day, I'm gonna look good too. And a lot of times, even if someone don't look good too, you put your earrings and lipstick on anyway, you look presentable. So they know when you come through, you're coming through and you're coming through already ready, looking professional. And, you know, take every job as a professional job, every job. I mean, when I go back when I was young, I took those jobs as professional. No job is better than the other because like I said, I know people that make over $100,000. I knew one that was homeless. So, and then like myself, they used to make minimum wage here and there. Well, at least I owned a house, you know? I'm talking about being young, having a house. So it's not how much you make, it's what you do and what you make. But again, I say when you go to these people and you have a problem, make sure you look good, not just that day, but every day, feel good about yourself first. And when you go to these people, be ready. And it works. It'll work for you. Excellent, excellent. Um, you know, and, and when Ms. Peggy, Ms. Peggy, we're going to have to do a show together. Uh, when it comes down to <laughs> you, um, you know, being the part, you know, when you show up on the job, people, they, they're going to want to know, can they take you serious? You know, I'll, I'll say, for instance, yesterday, you know, I planned, you know, uh, to work from home. And, you know, kind of get some things done. But, you know, my boss called. He said, hey, Marilyn, I won't be able to uh, get to my meeting on time. And I have a guest coming in. He hardly ever has guests coming in. 
he's got, I've got, he said, I've got guests coming in. He said, can you meet her there? You know, and, you know, let her know I'll be there just a little bit late. Y'all, I had to stop what I was doing. I had to stop and think about what I was going to put on because I'm getting ready to represent him as the vice president. I mean, as the CEO, and I'm having to think, you know, uh, what would, you know, how would, how would I represent Frank uh, to where he would not be embarrassed about me or anything like that. And then I didn't know who the woman was that I was going to be meeting with. I just know if he's meeting with her, with him, if she's meeting with him, she's, you know, she's probably got some, you know, some high ranks or whatever. So y'all, what I did was I, I went, I, I went ahead, I started thinking, all right, I need to get dressed. I need to get ready. And y'all, I made sure that I dressed the part for that meeting. And when I got there, you know, I was so glad that I did, you know, but we had one of the most down to home conversations, you know, the lady and I, until Frank got there. But my thing is, I always want to represent Frank. I don't ever want to get in there and say the wrong thing, you know, so I thought about, okay, so what will we talk about if I'm sitting here talking to her? What did we have in common? We had our children in common. We talked about our daughters we talked about raising children uh we work we work in a church setting so we talked about religion we talked about our faith you know sometimes just being ready not being afraid to show up for different things i, I don't hold the title that my boss does but i do hold the title that my boss does because i represent him and everything that I do. So when I go in, you know, everybody else may have jeans on when they go to work. Everybody else may have t-shirts going on. I can't do that. I don't have the leisure of doing that. I have to dress to make sure that I'm represented, that I could be called in at any time. Another example, we were getting ready. Uh, we were having, I got called into, you know, a big meeting with Bishop Jakes that was there. My first time being called in. Y'all, that particular day when I uh, got dressed, I had on casual clothes, you know, this and that. You know, sometimes I would put my tennis shoes on in the morning time just because we were going to be doing a lot of walking. When I heard that we were going to be in front of Bishop Jakes, y'all, I just so happened to have had some heels in my car. I went to that car. I transformed that entire uh, um, 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 outfit that I had on, and I made it dressed up because I did not want to embarrass Bishop Jakes. I wanted to make sure that I was representing at all times because guess what? People see you and you never know when they're going to call you for something else later on in life. So I say just be ready at all times. Those things that you're praying about, promotion, um, you know, um, uh, you know, getting increased. You don't know where increase is going to come from. So you want to be ready at all times. When you go to the grocery store, ladies. You may think this is so simple, but please don't go to the grocery store with your duster on and your house shoes on and your bonnet on your head because you just never know who you're going to run into. You, you may have sat in on a meeting with someone the day before and y'all just happened to live in the same neighborhood and went to the same grocery store and then they saw you. You want to make sure that you represent the person that you are. Don't be three, four, five, six different people. Be the person that you are and represent yourself, you know, represent who you are everywhere you go. And that, that could be a long conversation to have because I really believe that we need to transform our thinking about what it is that you want to represent. Who do you want to represent? Y'all, I didn't know Peggy back in the day when she may have been at Whataburger, but I can almost imagine Peggy was dressing like she is now. This just seems to be a part of who she is as a person. Know who you are. Dress the part. You know, make sure your conversation is lining up. You know, don't just go out there flipping off on people, doing things in the parking lot, you know, being unseemly in the church. And then you think that God is going to bless you with, you know, something greater. Relationship wise, too, make sure you represent yourself as who you say that you are. Don't be a tail barrier. Don't be messy. You know, don't be a troublemaker. Don't be those kind of things because when it comes down to promotion or elevation or whatever you be a next in line you want to make sure that you represent yourself watch your mouth watch the things that you say i know you say you keep it at 100 but this may not be the season for you to keep it 100 not for where you trying to go you may want to keep it humble so that you can get to that place so you know, just, just want to kind of share that. And, and Peggy, I agree with, oh, my God, I, we do need to do a segment together. <laughs> oh, that's what I really well, want to well, share. Go ahead, well, Peggy. I'll just, I'll just say this, and, I, and I'll let it alone. One of the things I've learned through life, 
you know, you, you're going to either have, if you're doing any dating, you're going to either be dating or you're going to be, you're going to have a boyfriend or, or you're going to have a husband, right? So what I've always done throughout my life, you're right, even at Whataburger, even though we had a uniform on, I would, you know, my I, I would be start, back in the day, it was like starch. You know, you start yourself up and you come to work with everything starch. So, you know, I would think I was just imaginary cute like that. You know, put on my little lipstick and makeup and kept my hair up. But even, you know, with the boyfriend, the dating, the husband piece, when you walk out the house, because I know some of you guys, you know, I, I don't know what, what what's in my little brain here, but I've always been like, you know, I'm, I'm going to get up and do me, look good for me. So w one thing I thought about was that, let's say, like, I'm married. I'm married. Let me tell you about, let me tell you about me. If, when I leave my house, if my husband leave the house and go anywhere across the country, it really doesn't matter when, because this is what I've always said. If he look, if he's looking at somebody, I can guarantee he going to look back at me. So you have to have that attitude. Look good to you. So if, if you're talking about the marriage, the boyfriend, the date piece, well, I can guarantee you, if you're looking good, he's going to look back and think about it. He's going to think about you. He's going to always think about you because he's going to always know you looking good and somebody's looking. So I've always known to keep myself apart. You know, but when it comes down to your job piece, when you go to your job, you're not representing you. Even though I tell you when I, when I get up in the morning, I get up to look nice for myself, but you carrying that job piece, you're, you have to represent your job every day. I mean, the type of job I had, I had to represent seven days a week because you might see a student anywhere. So look at your, yourself and look at your job, look at your, you know, your other half and think about you. You know, self-preservation can come first. Do you. You can't do others until you can do you. Once you do you, you don't have to look in the mirror no more that day. All you're doing is looking out there at somebody trying to help somebody or trying to do something for somebody or something for that job the rest of the day and feel confident with doing it because you're done with you. You don't have to worry about running back, see if your lipstick on. You don't have to worry about seeing if your hair fits, if your clothes on right, because you did all of that that morning. That was your little grace and mercy that morning. So if you try to practice that, I think that would be good because even you can have all, you can have two, I, well, I've had friends with plenty of degrees, but I, I've always had a friend. I had, I, she, she just passed away this year. But she worked on a job with me for 15 years. And the only thing the boss asked her to do was like he asked all of us to do. We had a dress code. You have to dress every day. So she figured, she looked at her salary and her thing was, you know, you pay, you pay me more money, then I'll dress. Well, that's not the way it rolls. I mean, you get a job and they tell you to dress a certain way, you dress a certain way. She lost her job. And, and I know she have three maybe even four beautiful degrees, very smart girl, love her to death. But if you don't go to part with these jobs, they don't care if you leave and they don't mind firing you. They don't mind putting something in your way to make you leave. They'll get rid of you. So you have to, like I said, and like, like I said, and like Miss Marilyn said, you have to stay humble. Do what folks say, even when you don't want to do it, because everything that everybody on these jobs have told me to do, I haven't, you know, I haven't really enjoyed it, but I did it. I did it anyway because it worked they knew more than more than you so open up and be real a lot of times people know more than you amen and wonderful thing one of the things i wanted to um uh, peggy she takes me back so far you know y'all for a long time um i thought that i was really just because i hadn't met anybody um you know like me or you know whatever and so sometimes you don't always just tell your story um, you know, unless it's, you know, I don't know, unless it's just needful. But I thought about Miss Peggy uh, when she talked about where she started at, you know, started at, you know, the, the, um, um, your fast food restaurants, different things like that. And that, that's because that's probably the community that we grew up in. Uh, but I thought about, you know, some of the jobs that I've held and every job that I've held, I've always done that job to the best of my ability. And uh, the first job that I had, I worked at um, a department store. You know, I went in that department store. I, I didn't like folding shirts. I didn't like folding pants or hanging up pants. 
you know, I didn't like that, but I knew that I needed to uh, find something that would keep me busy. And this was just a, as a teenager. And, um, but let me take that back. The first job that I had was actually at a chicken place. I worked at a place called Jim Dandy in Tyler, Texas. Uh, many people uh, may not remember Jim Dandy because it's, it's so old, but y'all, I went in there and that's the place that I learned teamwork. I learned how to work as a team. We had the best squad working with us. I was the youngest one in the house, and I'm mean, in the in the uh, in the you know in the in the business at that time. And I learned from the greatest people, you know, uh, Mr. Finnis Daniel, uh, Mrs. Cynthia. She's Cynthia Warren now. Uh, we we had the best team at Jim Dandy, and I learned how to take orders. I'll never forget my boss. I'll never forget the beginners that they gave me. And y'all, I never missed a day. I always showed up anytime that they needed somebody to work. work. X one, I was trying to get out of the house and I didn't have any bills. So if I made six and seven dollars a week at that time, that was a whole lot of money, you know. But it was just the work ethic that I was learning. And every time I went on a new job, I always took that same work ethic. I'm looking for a great team everywhere I go, you know. Um, and I think over the years, I have learned. I've learned my value. You know, in those places, I learned how to show up. I learned how to obey. You know, I learned how to take orders, you know, those kind of things. And the Bible says, to whom much is given, um, to, to whom much is given, much is going to be required of you. I did not know one day that the Lord will be leading, putting me in positions of leadership to where people will literally begin to start taking orders from you. And I always say how you served in another man's house, that's how other people are gonna serve you as well. I say this and I'm gonna close on this. Uh, there are often times, I know the, the ones that have been with me for a long time, they've, asked, they've heard me say this in times past that if I don't sow that type of treatment, I don't have to reap that type of treatment. If I did not sow discord, if I did not sow disgruntlement, if I didn't sow showing up late, if I didn't show, you know, mildness, I don't have to receive that. So I say that to say, know your worth, know who you are, know what you bring to the table. And I think sometimes we need to raise, raise our awareness of who we are, what God has called us to do, and get in your right season. I am willing to believe that many of us are just not in the right season of our lives, and we're going through a lot of unnecessary things, because if you know that's not what you sowed, ladies, hear me well. If you didn't sow that, you don't have to reap that. You know, it may be your fears that's making you reap a lot of things or making you, um, you know, stay in with a lot of things. But if you didn't sow that, know that everything that you do, you're doing it for a purpose. God's got a plan for you. So when major doors open up for me, guess what? You know, I go in and I receive those things. And when I receive it, I always say, no man gave this to me. And can't no man take it away. Anything that I received in the spirit, I promise you, no man can take it from me. Your relationships, make sure that when you are pursuing relationships, make sure you get it in the spirit. You get in the spirit, nobody can take it away from you. You make sure your friendships, your partners, your businesses, get it in the spirit. You get it in the spirit and nobody can take it away from you. Your money, you when God gives you something, get it in the spirit. No man can take those things away from you. If you're dealing with insecurities with things, it's because that's an area that God wants to help build you up in. Nobody's doing it to you. Nobody's doing that. God is just trying to elevate us in some places. So my prayer is that we all will take, you know, just some little nugget this morning. You know, something maybe Mrs. Peggy said, I, I know Ms. Peggy or Ms. Nancy. I know we're all on different levels. We got women in here, different age ages they're in different stages still raising children some of us on the other side of raising children you know some of us are dealing with you know children that are deceased at this particular time you know just know just get in your proper lane get in the right season that you need to be in so that you can grow and that you don't take things personal either you know may your raising style your grooming style may not be like miss nancy's don't get listen listen don't get so touchy that you drop off the line because she's talking about something that you would not do. She may not be talking to you. We just got through saying, quit taking it personal. She's just talking from her experience, some things that she's growing through. 
don't just drop off. Well, I don't, I don't need to listen to that. That's that pride. And then when you come on, you'll be wondering, will anybody listen to you? Make sure, make sure you make room for other people and other people will make room for you too. Miss Peggy, the thing she talked about, maybe you didn't start off like that. Maybe you didn't start off at a restaurant or whatever the case be. It doesn't matter where you start. It's God that has the ultimate ending for your life. So when you're telling your testimonies and sharing your stories, ladies, know that it is for someone. God would not have allowed you to share it if it was not for anybody. So I come against any spirit of backlash this morning in the name of Jesus uh, from any testimony that was shared, uh, any um, maybe life experience that was shared, that the enemy does not come in to try to taunt you at the end of this message. You know, that you will realize that what you shared, you shared it for someone. Then if you didn't reach for just one person, that was enough. Just remember that you are the mouthpiece that's being used by God. Somebody may have came in this room this morning just wanting to give up on life. You know, felt like maybe they were the worst parent in the world. You know, wondering what happened, you know, to my marriage. What's going on with that? Maybe that's who the message was for. Maybe they are the ones that were praying before they got in the room. Lord, I need to hear a word from you. You know, receive it as it is. Ladies, when you get off, hey, dust the, dust the, you know, dust your, you know, wash, you know, wash your feet, you know, keep moving on. All right, next week it'll be something else. We'll deal with something else. Every day is not going to be just your particular day. We have to learn how to share in this space with others. Last thing that I want to say, ladies, let's move away from that place called entitlement. You know, we feel like we're, we have, we're so entitled that if everything is not done for me, that I find no value in it. You know, and sometimes we have to stop and think about what another person needs in this season, you know, um, and, and the Lord may be trying to teach us how to give. And as you give, it'll come back to you. He said, press down, good measure, press down, shaking together and running over. If you yield your heart over to hear what the spirit is saying to somebody else this morning, you may realize that you needed it after all. You may have been just in that place where you're taking everything personal. Maybe something happened to you before you got on the line. Maybe you went to bed with something last night and you woke up this morning and may have felt, you know, oh my God, you know, no, it's just the residue. We're all in this space trying to get to a particular place. So, you know, let's celebrate each other. You know, let's let's be respectful of one another. You know, if you're coming in and off of the lines, I understand some people are dropping off, you know, because their lines are dropping off. But don't drop off because you may think that, oh, I don't want to hear that message or whatever the case may be. Uh, let's come in and give honor where honor is due. And we as women, we always need that encouragement. We always need to be built up. We always need to be in a place where we feel like we're respected you know, so that we can build what we call a community of sisterhood uh, to where we are, we're loving on each other. So um, I just appreciate everybody coming in. Thank you so much, you know, for the nuggets, ladies, this morning. I'm going to definitely go back and listen to the replay because it was definitely something in there for me, you know, that I needed. And, and sometimes we have to get into a quiet space to where we can hear it again and hear it again and hear it again. But until we meet again, you guys be blessed. Have a wonderful, wonderful Thursday. Know that God is working out everything, everything that is concerning you. If you just keep on coming back, just keep trusting in God and then ask God for what it is that you need. You just never know. God may change somebody's message in the morning time just because you went in before the Lord about something that you needed. So use this opportunity to pray. Use this opportunity to build in God and I know that God loves you. So Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you so much for the words that have been spoken. We thank you for everybody that's dropped in the room on today. Uh, I pray, Lord God, that you met us all in this place at one particular for, for whatever it was that we stood in need of. Uh, Father, some of us just need to in, increase our prayer life. You know, some of us just need to increase our listening. And we're having to pull down all of those imaginations. All that anxiety, we got too many thoughts running through our mind. You know, we just brought these things up yesterday, so I know it's popping back up again. So once again, we cast down imaginations. Every high thing that wants itself wants to exalt itself against the knowledge of God. We bring those things into captivity to the obedience of Jesus Christ. 
We look to you to be the author and the finisher of our faith. We know that all things are working together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. I pray for single moms on this morning, you know, boy moms in particular. I pray, Lord God, that you will give them the grace that they need to stay in the fight and to never give up. I pray, Lord God, that you would give them such a love for their boys that uh, they don't throw in the tile and bring the wrong somebody in their life just because they think that they needed some help. I pray, Lord God, that you would help them to hear behind the message of what their boys may be saying, to hear the cry, and to lean on you, Lord God, for the answers that we need. I pray, Lord God, that the right mentors, it may not be relationships that the ladies need right now. They may need mentors in their lives. I pray for the right mentors to come in and be an example to the children. The girls need the examples too, but our boys really, really need it. To be an example, you know, about what manhood is all about, about what respect is all about what provision is all about, you know, what, you know, honoring one another is all about, you know, we want to put the right words before you, Lord God. We're crying out about a whole lot of things, but Father, you said that they that worship me, they have to worship me in spirit and in truth. So Father, we're coming in to bring truth in. We just need some help. We didn't like the experiences that we had. And Father, we feel sometimes that that, that, that burden has been placed upon us to be mommy and daddy, but help us not to look at it as a burden, but look at it as an honor to be represented in the home until change comes. So Father, I pray that we not do anything that would uh, tear our boys down, you know, that would push them into the arms of the world, gangs, drugs, things like that, you know, but not to be so soft on them to where they don't understand and get the message that we're trying to relate to them. I pray, Lord God, that you would give us the right to help us to get in another room, another room called understanding, another room called preservation, you know, help us to get it, help us to ask for it, first of all, but a lot of times we have not because we ask not, sometimes we don't know what to ask because we're so clouded in our minds, we got so many things that we need to do, we don't need anything else added on us, but our children are important to us, and Lord, I pray that you would help us to remember that they do matter as well. So Father, we pull away this thing called anxiety, this thing called fear, this thing called running and fighting, all of that, we pull all that down, those imaginations. We're just going into a place that we think that we need. But Father, we wanna put on the garment of love. We wanna put on a garment of peace so that our boys can rest in that as well. And also our girls can see us because we don't wanna raise up these masculine women. You know, we need to let that soft girl come out of us, help them to see something different. Those of us that are standing in positions of leadership, Father, help us to be worthy of the calling that has been laid before us. Help us not come in the room and just feel like we're just, we're just coming just to come, but help us to understand the assignment that you have given to us. It's not an assignment that comes from Maryland, but it's actually an assignment that comes from you because when we gave a yes to it, we didn't give a yes to Miss Maryland. We gave a yes to your will. We gave a yes to your way. We gave a yes to yes, God, we will obey. So Father, we reset this room even right now in the name of Jesus, that this room will be a complete representative of who you are. We stand on the promises of God. They are yes and they are amen. We believe that all things are possible to him that believe. Father, we will increase our prayer life. We will increase that thing called patience in our life. We will walk with a spirit of long suffering within us until we get the answers that we need. We're going to take down all of those masculine tones that we have in the name of Jesus. And we're going to walk in a place, the Lord God, that we, where we can be heard properly. Father, we're also going to come in and represent who we are in you. You know, we look at our sister, Miss Peggy. Uh, she comes in every morning as a representation to women to let them know that it doesn't matter where you start. It matters where you're going. Do you have a vision for where you're going? And wherever you're going, represent that place. When you walk in the room, you know, you know, eyes need to begin to start moving and it needs to bring about an awareness 
You know, don't let people just get in and just gaze at what they're seeing, but let it be a representation to them too, to bring your best to the table every day. God put a watch over our words in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we're, we're coming to the end of January. This room is being set for the entire year. We want to represent who you are to us. What is your worth to us? We don't just come in and go out and come in and go out. We want to come in and be still. You said he that is planted in the house of God, you're going to flourish in the gates. Lord, teach us how to be still. Some of us never finish anything that we start. We just go here and there and everywhere. Help us to be still and know that you are God. So Father, bless us this morning. Bless the conversations. Lord, let this thing ring in our ear over and over again. Let's listen to the replays, God, until it makes a change within us. And Lord, whatever you do, Father, don't, don't, don't move without us moving with you in this season. Don't leave us in Lodabar. Don't leave us, leave us in that place called lack. Don't leave us in that place called where nothing is, nothing is happening. Father, we want to find ourselves moving progressively with you. So, Father, we thank you this morning. As we get ready to come back on tomorrow, uh, I pray, Lord God, that you would bless this house. Oh, my God, bless this house as we come in to bless you. Help us to come in with purpose in mind. Help us to come in with purpose in mind, Lord God. Help us to bless this house. And we thank you for it all today in Jesus' name. Y'all meet us back again, 5.30 in the morning. I've got some surprises for y'all as far as guest speakers. Come on in. Lines open up at 5.30 in the morning. And we'll get started right at 6 o'clock. So be sure to invite us. Make sure to, be sure to get that new link that was sent out and uh, share it with others. But whatever you do, do not miss tomorrow's conversation in Jesus' name. Amen. You guys be blessed.